and <laughs> recording wait recording and we're recording i think so we are um everybody knows rob anton he's been on this podcast a million times i'm trying to i don't want to i'm gonna break that if i try to brute force it i don't think a microphone is something yeah. to brute force on I mean, I think you're in a good position there. I can make it clear. You can? Okay. Yeah, I, I just like yeah, I was yeah, yeah. You're good, tightening you're good. everything the other day, and I've somehow got this thing. This thing's supposed to kind of like pivot like that, but it's not, and I don't want to just grab it and twist because that's normally what I do when shit's stuck, but I don't think a delicate microphone is necessarily the uh, the thing to do that with. So um, Yeah, microphones hitting the ground or hitting anything hard. Is yeah, it's not good. Um, to the microphone's life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't think so. Um, so we were texting, and I think I told you, and this happens a lot whenever I have uh, guests, and we'll, like, we're talking off the podcast. They'll start telling me an interesting story, and I'll be like, save that. Save it for the podcast. And the reason is, is because I want myself to have legitimate reactions you know, sure, sure. Yeah. not like, and not like those shitty YouTube channels, like watch me react to, you know, yeah, expert. like, no, those are kill yourself. <laughs> right, right, right. Right, 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 right. But, um, you who I would argue that I probably, I know you better than probably 99% of podcast guests for all the new listeners. Rob was a very close friend of my oldest brother who is not with us anymore, but you started telling me, a story I had never heard. We were texting and you're like, yeah, did I tell you about the time when I was like, like detained by the Department of Homeland Security? And I was like, what? And yeah. mind you, Rob was like episode number four, I think. And we are now on 322. And Rob was like, yeah, I was. And I was like, that's an episode. And so with that introduction, I'm going to shut the fuck up. And Rob, please regale like, me. It, it's it's. It is and it isn't a story. It, I think it was more of a time and a place. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So let me say you this, say, set the stage. I'd already been, uh, been at school in Georgia for one year, but I went to Chambly High first. I didn't go, I didn't start at Pius. For everyone that doesn't know, Rob moved from Canada down to Georgia. Yes, yes. Because I was expelled from my high school in, up in Canada. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> my father sent me away to yeah. straighten me out. Into Georgia, um, where he, yeah. met my, he where he met my older brother. Sorry, I'll shut exactly. up. Now. Yeah, no, 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 it's fine. You can fill yeah. in the blanks. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so I'd already been there for a year, um, and in the previous, like before summer vacation, I had uh, gone through interviews for like twelve different schools in it, in the Atlanta area uh, to continue going to high school. That's how I ended up with Pius. Basically, it was like one of five, and it's the one I felt most comfortable at that yeah. I got accepted to. So yeah. um, I ended up with Pius. It was like really, really random. You know what I mean? Um, and I was raised Catholic, so it was easy for me to get in there. <laughs> it was yeah. like bing yeah. bang. They like called up the priest. Yeah. He was this guy baptized. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, he's good. We'll let him. We'll he let him. he gets the, yeah, he gets the. And so <laughs> that was kind of my pass in, if you will. <laughs> he's one um, of the family. Yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, this is like a year. So that had happened, but 9-11 had just happened like just the past September, right? Yeah. Um, and things changed completely. Uh, like the way visas were processed, the way, like everything changed. Uh, the way you traveled, like it all just changed in a very short period of time. Not everybody, I think, like remembers this or like a lot of people were young and didn't necessarily travel at that age. I traveled at an abnormally young age, like internationally. Yeah. So it was like yeah. kind of weird. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, on my way back, I guess um, my parents have been kind of dragging their heels, getting the paperwork, like actually picking the paperwork up for my visa. Like it had already been processed. I was already re ready, ready. Um, but <laughs> so we didn't have the paperwork and I was already like, like school was about to start. It was like the Friday school to started Monday or something like that. Like it was like, I had, I had they had to get me there so that I didn't miss that first, like, cause it's new school. Mm -hmm. They didn't want me to be at a new school and also like late mm -hmm. uh, for class. So they just like, they just told my dad, just drop him off at the, you know, at the Toronto airport. And he literally did, he like dropped me off and left. <laughs> and then I tried to go through and then they're like, why are you going back? I was like, I'm just visiting my aunt and uncle. And then they're like, all right, 
And then they're like, can you come with me, please? And they took me to like a holding room. And I sat there for like, I don't know, 30 minutes to an hour. Um, and then two agents came in like with badges and everything. And they're like, what, why are you going to the United States? And I'm like, I'm going to see my aunt and uncle, <laughs> which isn't like technically the truth. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because I lived with them, right? So I was like, I'm going to see them. And they're like, did you just finish? Like, did you just go to school for a year here? And I was like, yes. <laughs> why didn't you say that? And like all this kind of shit. And I was like, I'm 16, right? I'm 16 so I'm not even I'm like scared a- scared shitless. Exactly. And I'm not even a, I'm still a minor, right? So they're, they're, they're being nice with me to, to say the least. But at this moment, my dad is completely left. He's like all the way back home almost, which is like we lived, I grew up maybe an hour and a half from downtown Toronto, like drive in the boonies, like in the middle of nowhere. Um, so he's almost all the way back there. So that's why like I ended up being late. Um, but the scariest part was they're like, if you come back and you try to get in here without a visa again, we'll charge you <laughs> with like lying. I can't remember the exact like wording he used, but it was basically I'll charge you with lying against the United States, which could have been a yeah. bogus charge at the time. I was yeah. 16. I think yeah. they were just trying to like scare me. Yeah. But two weeks later, came back had the visa and i'm pretty sure it was the same immigration person like that i was dealing with at the kiosk or whatever and they're like i see you got it hey because <laughs> it's it the like, thing there was a weird time yeah because it was a weird time yeah the early 2000s it went from like travel from canada to the united states is like literally like hey see you we're going shopping like we yeah, would like, just drive into each other's countries yeah basically. I mean, you guys were like, like just the upstairs the neighbor. was immense because yeah. nobody cares yeah right? and, it's, <laughs> like, and it's canada it's exactly. fucking canada it's almost yeah it's a, a very similar places to be yeah. yeah um and yeah so like that that was just like the reason why i was two weeks late essentially for for school yeah so it was like this big weird thing with like i kind of hated it in retrospect because it drew attention to me you know what I mean? Because not only am I like the new kid from Canada, I'm also two weeks late. Yeah. And I'm also like, I remember we went in for like, I went in as I had, did you ever have Lammers, Mr. Lammers? Yeah, Matt Lammers. Yeah. 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 So like it was 10th grade biology. And yeah, it was uh, the day I showed up, we had a test. Yeah. And he's like, you don't have to take it if you don't want to. But I was like, no, I'll do that. And mm -hmm. I ended up getting like a 93 on it. <laughs> he was the teacher I had for when you had to do like summer reading okay. and we had to read a book about Krakatoa, the volcano. But oh, the okay. book was like, the book was like a, it was more like a research paper, like published sure. and less of a story. Just so it was just, book. so it was just brackets and like, you know, it was like the genome and phylum and kingdom of like the bacteria found there and the different sedimentary. It was a research is essentially a paper. Yeah. Yeah, I was like 16 doctor. and I was like, <laughs> I remember reading it up at my aunt's lake house in, I think, Maine. So mm -hmm. I, this would have been like 2006. I remember I was up there just reading it that summer and I was like, I can't, I was like, I can't finish this. And I don't think it will matter if I do, because even if I took a test on what I've read already, I get an F. So I remember going into, I just, that was like. That back then, you know, 16, that was like, that was my first brush with rebellion. It was like, I'm not going to finish this Krakatoa research paper. And I remember going to Matt Lammer's uh, class on the first day of the school year. And I mean, he's like, so you guys all read the book? We were like, no. And he's like, who wants to go make volcanoes? You're we like, what? And we just went out into the parking yeah. lot. And he's just putting like Mentos yeah. and Diet Coke. And he was like, like he was like, all right, enjoy your junior year. <laughs> it was just like that. That's Matt Lammer's. But we had a really good science department. Like as far as like head, I don't know if did you take chemistry, Dalton? No, but all my smart no. friends did. Okay. Well, your brother did as well. Yeah. Um, and him and I used to Miss Dalton used to pay us to do her uh, yard work. I don't know if you remember that. I didn't know that. Yeah. She paid good money too. And uh she was a badass. She used to drive like a Dodge Stealth, which is like a Mitsubishi two thousand GT, which is like a twin turboed inline and six motor like mm -hmm. fucking badass turbocharged car Fuck she used yeah. to drive it to school like this cherry fucking red sports did, car did badass. one of the teachers like this old chemistry teacher like did one of the teachers have 
Am I like, is there like a false memory in my head? Did someone have an H1 Hummer? Yeah. Not... I remember always seeing one in the front area. Wasn't there like, one? Like a badass, like, yeah. Those trucks were like I, 10 I almost, feet I, wide. Yeah, I almost guaranteed. Yeah. Yeah. It's not an important fact, but I just remember that. No, dude, St. Pius was an incredible school. I mean, I can say that 15 yeah. years in hindsight. That, I enjoyed that... I enjoyed school, and I, I luckily got through my kind of super rebellious phase by the time I got to Pius. So anything that was, like, bad in Pius, I was just like, you guys are fucking babies, whatever. <laughs> like, yeah. it's like, I was like, at that time, I was like, I've been interviewed by the police in regards to an arson case. I've been, like... I'm like I've been detained by <laughs> the Department of Homeland by... Security. Exactly. And you guys are like, let's wear shorts instead of pants one day. <laughs> <laughs> like, I oh, didn't say sure. prayer. I just clasped my hands and said, and yeah. kept my mouth closed. I told the teacher I was saying it in my head. Yeah, exactly. I wasn't saying it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember I felt like such a fuck funny, up yeah. because John went through four years at St. Pius and never got a detention. And I remember he got like some gold star when he graduated. Uh, that's not. That's not technically true. We all, not, no one in my graduating class graduated without a detention. Did you know that? Well, we I remember. We all got detained. We all got detentioned in our final final year. They detentioned well, us all in the auditorium. Well, they must have waived it for John because I remember he got like this. Okay, I was I was there. I, I, was, I, yeah. I think it was one of those like we all got it. And it was like across the board of demerit. But that's it, what I mean. It, it brought up the average. So that's do you what know I mean. what I mean? Like, yeah, that's what yeah, I mean. Exactly. It's, it's, it's At like, the end of the day, he was the only one with one. That's <laughs> yeah. what I mean. Is it, is it yeah, was yeah. the curve. It was the curve on the yeah. test. It's like No, Tetris. we were terrible. We 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 had like three senior pranks in one week. And like like Father Lopez got mad. That wow. takes a lot. You know that what I mean? A, like, that takes a lot. Yeah, you got like pissed with us. That's that actually takes. I'm actually they, a little offended. Yeah, they rounded us all up and uh, kept us for because like it was for the uh, alarm clock prank. Mm. Everybody, every day, yeah, set up alarms in their lockers, either on their phones or actual alarm clocks. Yeah, um, and they set them all for like eleven ten or some shit like that. I don't know. I was in uh, Coach Carter's class at the time. Um, and uh one went off early and he hears it and he's like what's that and they just like closed the door and like people kept going like can i go to the bathroom and like leaving the door open <laughs> so that we would hear it and basically it took them i don't know 20 minutes to go through all the lockers and collect all of the like either cell phones that were ringing or alarms that were ringing or like whatever they confiscated everything and then uh principal wow oh, what the hell how did i forget his name Spellman? Spelling. Yeah. Spelling. Uh got on and he's like, since the senior class decided to like delay class for everybody for 20 minutes, they can spend 20 minutes in the auditorium at the end of the day. And they did. They made us all sit in the auditorium. That's a fair trade. But then us, like, and I'm pretty sure JP would be able to confirm this. Uh at the time started we sat there and got like basically the whole class to be like rah, 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 rah. <laughs> like I'll uh, uh, like South Park at the time rah, 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 even rah, rah. when we were all caged we were all just like a bunch of rah, 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 rah. well I remember I felt like I felt like I was gonna go to Guantanamo because it was my first day at Pius and my hair was too long and I remember I was in Miss Clister's homeroom yeah. who had been there since oh. like the 50s and I got a detention at 7.55 on my first day, meaning I got a detention yeah, be bef great. before high school started. And I was so upset because John never got one, technically. I was lucky that I had Lammers. And then I, I don't know, I, I avoided Clister until 12th grade. So well, I was also in the I didn't of... have anybody. What's that? No, go on. No, I was just going to say, I didn't have like, uh, I didn't have super strict uh, teachers right off like in first semester. And uh, I remember specifically someone coming up to me in the stairwell and being like, have you gotten your haircut recently? And I just thought they were like making fun of my hair. I was like, kind of like, fuck you. 
like you know what i mean <laughs> like maybe <laughs> i did maybe i maybe right? i did maybe i didn't but then yeah i was kind of giving like an answer like that and they're like no man you gotta get you like you you can't like have it over your ears it's, i was like oh okay you're like looking out for me you're not like starting to shit okay i got it this is a prison okay i was about to say this is being in the prison camp and <laughs> yeah, they're saying exactly. like straighten your star of david they're exactly, like hey exactly. no they're like straighten your star of david and you're like you're like da da oh oh okay got it yeah yeah, yeah. But I, I remember, mean, yeah. it's still, I don't know. We had a lot of, like, characters in my grade, I would say. Yeah. We just had a lot of people who would do, they would just push the envelope so much. And, like, with everybody. That's all they did. Do you, <laughs> do you remember, do you remember um, when people would Ninja Turtle, or that, what was it called, turtling? When you turtle a backpack? You'd go out during lunch and everyone would have their bags like against the wall and like that like outdoor walkway. And you'd go out and you just pick someone at random. It was I mean, it was truly it was a terrorist attack because it was just random terror. And it was you would take their backpack into the bathroom or something, you'd unzip it, you take out all their books, you turn the backpack inside out, put the books back in, and then zip it up from the inside. And so it was just inside out. Which is called turtle. It's just for yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, no. I missed that. Oh, well, and I remember when so, you say turtling, it makes me think of like ninth graders with all of their textbooks in their back. Yeah, yeah. Like hunched over. Turtle yeah, yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, maybe it wasn't called turtling, but I remember. I don't know. It, maybe it could be. Maybe I remember it happened to I remember it happened to me and like an adult. I couldn't I couldn't stand it. And I went out and I thought I targeted who I who I thought was this girl in my class that did it to me. And I thought I targeted her. And so I remember me and my friend David took this backpack to the bathroom and we turtled it. We turned it inside up, blah, blah, blah. And then I remember we took like a whole roll of saran wrap, like whole, like, you know, like 500 yards and went around the whole thing. And then we took tinfoil and we did a whole roll of tinfoil on it. And we called it Sputnik, Sputniking. Like the first Soviet satellite, that yeah, little, yeah, that yeah, gold, little that ball. the silverish ball. Yeah. Which called it Sputnik, and we went and threw it back in. So it's just this shiny ball. <laughs> and I remember, and I remember going out and like sitting right in front of the chapel and like watching, and me like wanting to see the girl just like be destroyed. And like that girl was nowhere to be seen. And I remember all the students came out and everyone got their backpacks. And I remember seeing this one like tiny freshman kid, and he's just looking around for his backpack. And slowly, as the crowd clears, and he realizes the only thing left is that silver brick. And I just remember he started to cry. And I was like, what have I become? And I was like, I've become the thing like I swore to never be. And I was like, I, I remember that hurt. I like went to Father Lopez's class and you know, it's Father Lopez just smiling. How are you? I and I was just like, I can't I'm a remember. Bad man. I can't remember any, and this is could could have been just because like I wasn't part of it, but like any targeted harassment towards anybody, it was almost like there was groups definitely, but neither, I don't know, they didn't really fuck with each other. It would have been like, I don't know, you would have had to have actively done something mm -hmm. against a senior in that in those days, or like someone against our class for people that had like shit with you. But yeah, largely across the board, our whole class. Like, like everybody would go to the same parties mm. not my like class. it was weird like even though there was like splits definitely there was clicks um there was only like two real like prom parties the other one but like, you know what i mean like yeah. it wasn't so like segregated and da -da -da different it was there was like you're with this group or you're with this group but there was always that overlap and like, mm. people were friends with other people i think it was just because there's a lot of clubs and shit yeah and so people would be, and the way they, they ran our classes, you always ended up like crossing over with people. Yeah. Mine was more like tribes in Afghanistan. It was like hyper-partisan, hyper-divided. At least that's how I thought. Maybe I just wasn't popular. Really? <laughs> I was like, everyone hates really? me. And in hindsight, it's like, no, you're just kind of a douche. That's the, that's the red pill that's hard to swallow. Is you're like, they're all conspiring <laughs> yeah, against I mean... me. And it's like, Sure. You might maybe you're just not that nice. Yeah, John and I were kind of I don't know. Like we definitely had a group, like mm -hmm. JP part of it, and like there was other people that were part of it. Mm -hmm. um, but there was also like I don't know. It's weird. 
there was like different centers if, if that makes sense mm. like certain people hung out like jp was friends with us but he wasn't his best friend at the time was like sean he, he and sean were always like mm-hmm. hanging around with one another yeah, yeah. whereas like me and john were like always hanging out with each other because like i don't know it just worked like that there's always like groups of people yeah. and um like i don't know if you remember john's i guess they dated briefly in high school not even maybe they were just friends for like a long time um I, again i don't want to name other people outside of our group of friends but like Probably. her and another girl were like really good friends and they were always together but like the group of us would come at parties and so forth do you ever did you ever hear about that give me one second the connection's kind of breaking up i'm gonna connect a lane and see if you're fine give me one second dude. you're fine rob anton canadian correspondent going off the going off the deep end we don't know where he is he's apparently leaving us he has that black background he very well could be in fallujah perhaps in abadabad who knows but yeah the oh, i think he's back is he rob are you back yep i think so you did you me? yeah did you ever hear about and i think it was my junior year maybe my senior year and it was there was a teacher who at the time i remember thinking was really old he was like 28 now i'm 30 but i remember he was 28 but he had just come back from iraq and he was a you you not not uga he was a saint pius alumni okay. and he got like a job coming back just doing whatever teaching whatever probably going to get his degree and you know they gave him a job you know stand up clean cut marine yeah. and uh i mean had just come back from like active combat deployment like was in the shit mm-hmm. and came immediately to saint pius <laughs> there was like a couple days between like covery fire and like morning prayer yeah. so i remember and he was like a hall monitor he when he would sit out near like um the dean's offices and mm-hmm. i remember i remember like the story coming up because i remember we at one moment i remember mr spellman coming on and saying uh that uh he had forgot to announce that there was this like new faculty meeting and basically we all got out at like lunch and, like no one knew why and so like all the seniors drove home and like you know all the younger people had like parents come pick him up it was whatever and then like there was like an email to everyone that we didn't have school the next day and we were all like cool this is like a wednesday and it was like badass and i remember being in the gym and uh where i lived in duluth and i remember seeing like an aerial shot like a helicopter shot of saint pius and i was like what the fuck and it turns out this guy who it, and i think he, he he might still work there i don't know um he he was sitting there you know kind of at like the nexus of several hallways yeah and he was like good friends with mr spellman you know like thanks for the job on short-term notice and he's like of course you know thank you for your service just all goodness goodness all around but apparently and like i don't fault him but apparently he started just like looking down like hallways and stuff and was just sketching lines of fire like he had just oh, come shit. back from he had just come back and yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I feel for the guy he had just come back from active de- active combat deployed sure. in an urban urban area yeah so he is it's probably ingrained into his mind that like you don't sit anywhere without knowing where is immediate cover where am i going to poke out and so to him it was just like hey if anything ever went south this is how i would defend this school Mm -hmm. he just being himself went to show the principal just and you know and had the principal been there he probably would have been like cool but you know maybe we shouldn't have this and it would have been diffused right there spellman didn't feel it what well no well spellman spellman didn't feel it right yeah, well, that's the thing there. is Spellman wasn't there, so he just left it on his desk. And so Spellman, being a good principal with a thousand kids under his control, yeah. saw a piece of notebook paper with lines of fire on it mm-hmm. and like a map of the school. He called the police. 
police called the Department of Homeland Security. Yeah. We were, we didn't know, but we were actually, we were evacuated that day. Evacuated. We just thought we got out at noon. When we yeah. were gone the next day, it's because they brought in the bomb squad and went through the whole school. <laughs> Jeez. And it wasn't, and, and if I recall correctly, I think this guy eventually was like, what is this about? You know, he's like, you know, he's in this mode or he's like, fuck. If I recall, and I could be butchering this, but if I recall, it was like, oh man, I was just thinking about what if something bad happened. <laughs> And he went and told Mr. Spell, and Mr. Spell was like, "But what what do? And he yeah. was like, "Yeah." And he was like, "Oh fuck!" And yeah. like, had Mr. Spellman just not been getting lunch at the time, probably yeah, all yeah. would have been. He probably would have been like, "Thank you, like, hey, thank you, you know, again, great American, but this is, you know, this is a school, maybe not the. Oh, okay." Right. But it was so there was no like nefarious actions. I don't think it was just you know he's fresh out of that. And he's just it's weird. I don't know. Maybe it's, it's a weird. Just, it's a weird thing. Sure. I think that there's other shit that is like okay, but had there been other things implemented, this would have been completely avoidable. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It's like if there was like some kind of military program where like okay, if you come back from like a live fireplace, you get a like a couple weeks um, of like decompress. To, like, decompress and we like talk it out and we get you back to like living as somewhat of a and civilian. I, I know it's not that easy. And, I don't know. And how I think that's what. I think that's what they were trying to do. I think that's why they let him come there immediately. Cause to them, it was like, no, we don't actually have a job for you. But it was like, yeah, Hey, but you're still putting, especially America. That oh, time, in hindsight, like, in hindsight, terrible school shooting is probably the only thing that was on his mind when you were like, you're the hall monitor. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. you put it in. It, yeah, exactly. So in, in hindsight, terrible idea. I think that's why they gave him a job, though, for that very thing. They were like, hey, until because they knew he didn't want to do this full time. You want to go get a you know a business degree. And it was like, hey, while you're getting on your feet, probably. And I'm just taking liberty and imagining probably. So he's not sitting at home alone, digesting everything that just happened the last nine months. They're like, hey, why don't you come here? Basically, you know, do busy work. You know, I think it was yeah, good no, intentions all around, and it was like, oh no, no, no! I'm not yeah. saying. I'm just saying it shouldn't befall a school <laughs> no, exactly. friend. Do you know what I mean? Like, exactly. yeah, no, I'm not saying that the things that happened weren't with done with the best of intentions. I'm just saying it's like sometimes you need a professional. You know, yes, get a veteran to hang out with this guy. Absolutely, it's like, right? it's like you know what I mean. Like, and of, of his war, I would say, yeah, yeah, probably yeah. as well, because like even connections between veterans of different wars it's not even necessarily the same all the time yeah. you know what i mean just because yeah. the personal experience it's yeah. not the same fighting in a jungle in vietnam as it is fighting in the mountains and plains of afghanistan exactly, exactly. <laughs> where like you hear a crack that could be the last thing you fucking hear yeah yeah you know what i mean it's like yeah it's, oh no it's oh no in hindsight terrifying. it's i, I mean if it wasn't so sad it would be in hindsight it's comical yeah almost, right yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. we brought them back for the best reasons, right? Yeah. And, it, you know, it'd be like if a guy from a nuclear submarine went and got a job after deployment with his uncle who runs a nuclear power plant. You know, it's just kind of like, whoo, you know, if things go wrong, this is how we'll deal with the fault, like the literal <laughs> radioactive right. fallout. But, yeah, no, it's ter- But it's kind of like what Tim Dillon says. Um He's like, you know, he's like Home Depot did this thing like a year or two ago where it was like it was supposed to be like a wholesome news story. And it was like this guy's like son with like, you know, it's like a one in a trillion disease where it's like an adolescent with ALS, just like a true like, is there a real God kind of disease? And they were like their insurance wouldn't let them bill a wheelchair. So they went to Home Depot and Home Depot provided like at a discount the materials to build their own. And it's okay, good intentions, sure. But like Tim Dillon's like, no, that's the not facts. a that's not a good story. Yeah. He's like, the fact that this child with ALS can't get a fucking wheelchair. Mm-hmm. And it's it's kind of like that, right? right? It's like this great, hey, you graduated here, you just served your country. Why don't you come here? Here's some busy work and like a little bit of money. I know you're trying to get your degree from wherever in Atlanta. And it just ended up with us, me looking at the news and seeing an aerial shot of a bomb squad going through my high school. And I was like, and then, so, you know, the next day, Mr. Spellman was like, now had to, was like, I lied to you all and I'm sorry. 
and it was like just yeah, exactly. nothing. And that's the other part. Right? Yeah, it's probably got nine thousand parents down his throat. And like, what the hell? What the Why fuck? do I have to stay home and take care of these little fuckers? Yeah, and then it's on like <laughs> then it's on like WSB that it's like yeah, exactly. why that not only that it's like why didn't you tell us that there's a bomb squad there? And not to mention like we actually had one of our friends' mothers was one of the anchors for one of the most popular oh, new yeah. morning news. Oh yeah. yeah, so like, could you fucking imagine? Could you imagine? <laughs> it's like that shit like, happened in our class. He's like, honey, did you know this? I, is I remember about? her bringing things up about like the school and like oh, in the morning when we would watch, right? Yeah. So it was like, oh my god, man, you're like what? Fuck. <laughs> fucking a. That was a yeah. That was a weird thing. I'm trying to just think of like other odd things. I remember nine well, eleven. Like, I, you on. have to understand that the American school, especially where we, where we lived in the level we lived at, mm -hmm. um, is very unique amongst people in the entire world. Like I've lived in three different countries. Yeah. When I explain some of my experiences in high school to people, they look at me. They're like, "It's like a fucking movie." And I'm like, "Sometimes it was. Sometimes it is exactly. But it it, it wasn't be. It wasn't like a movie." because that's what it's like. It was like a movie because we were emulating movies and we mm -hmm. had the resources to do so. Mm, that's yeah. why. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Uh -huh. We all grew up on American Pie. So yeah. how the fuck do we want to party? We want to go to like someone's big, huge house, house. Where parents are away for the weekend. And we Everyone's going like... to lose their virginity. We got to have red right. solo cups. There's got to right. be the live band. It's got to exactly. be like some 41 or something. Right. Like, Ooh. And we're going to do this like, well, I don't think we ever got that far um live band wise but like yeah like in my day we had like at one party a fucking halo like on the side of a two-story house like halo land party beside yeah. a pool party beside a barbecue with like firing guns and shit in the back like it was a fucking mm -hmm. it was a fun ass party right That's amazing <laughs> yeah. yeah um that that is true though right because we grew up on those movies and it was like, oh, we're not doing it right. Exactly. So we wanted to emulate. We thought that was what it was. That's what the party um, is. Yeah. We saw. It. And because there are effects simile of American culture, like a lot of those, like if you take American Pie, basically, literally, it was people, it was writers. They sat in a room and they're like, okay, what is like the American like high school experience? And it, they probably like, cherry picked from a hundred people's experiences and then compress them all into this one like super crazy and then thing. dialed that compression up exactly and so we saw that and we were like oh well like we have to do that we have like, to. do you know what i mean like yeah, it's exactly. kind of like this very basic monkey see monkey do right, right? Yeah. it's it's watching like the 1996 u.s olympic basketball team the quote-unquote dream team with kobe mm -hmm. bryant rest in peace with larry mm -hmm. bird magic johnson michael jordan yeah. It's like seeing that a team yeah. that could wasn't just the it wasn't just like an NBA championship team. It was the champion of NBA champions. It's like looking at that and saying, how come we're not putting on that performance? And it's like, well, you're a middle school church league. <laughs> you know, it's not Michael Jordan getting alley oops from Larry Bird. Right? It's right. a bunch of retards but, all cuts and but the crazy. thing is the settings, the settings all look the same because yeah. like we had like we're people with wealth and money mm -hmm. we had uh the we pool, had a, a, a stadium yeah exactly well no even our school our school yeah. is fucking like when i tell my my like fiance about like the school high school i went to she's seen it she's like what the fuck oh yeah what the oh, fuck yeah. is this this is like a university oh yeah like for, oh, for oh, people Paz like do you know incredible. what i mean it was incredible. Like, why do you need a $9 million football field? It's like, well, the Bulldogs like to practice there. <laughs> it's like, literally, that was it. Yeah. Yeah. I remember we had, we yeah, can. we had the yeah. AstroTurf. We had that special, that new, but it is now like a national common. We right. were the first, I think we were the first like we actual were. like usable field in the nation. We were. To have what you, everyone now just says is normal. But what it was is it was the fake grass with those like rubber, rubber pellets. Microscopic oh, I fucking pellets. hated that shit. They were I terrible there, man. But we had it before. You slide and out on that shit. They, came, they, they put it on our field, and I remember the owner, like the owner of the Falcons, came and they checked it out, and then that went into the Georgia Dome. But it was like, yeah, well, that was yeah. Bulldogs, Bulldogs were practicing there even when I was like in the off season when I was there. Yeah, they would use the field while yeah. we were away at summer school. 
That's yeah. like you'd have two days sometimes. Like I wasn't even in football, but you knew because like you still hung around school in the summer for some reason sometimes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, like they'd fucking come. I don't know how often. It, it became more frequent, I think, as time went by. But like before they had their field, they used ours. Yeah. And it was, and I remember being in high school because it was an American pie thinking that I was like being robbed of something. And in hindsight, I'm like, man, how the oh, fuck did my, I'm like, in the hindsight, I'm like, how did my parents and my teachers not just backhand me and say like, you ungrateful fuck. Well, you don't right? realize it until you're talking to people who've never, who never had it. And they look at you like, you're like, are you fucking like psycho? Like, you know when, what I mean? you're like where you grew am up. I, am I? Yeah. So, like, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, and it's, it's like, everyone it. has like their own car. You know me, I'm like, Oh, I have like our used Jeep, but it was like, no, I had my own set of wheels at right. 18 and it was like that's insane and the thing about you is like i don't think that your parents couldn't afford it i just don't think your parents were those type of people no do you know they, what i mean like yeah, there was different much... groups of people at our school who yeah like, were given different things definitely yeah. absolutely i mean some kid yeah brand new like suvs and i'm like how come i have this old 93 Ch cherokee and it's like we have it and in hindsight, it's like <laughs> grateful for the fucking wheels you have. Because it cost me eighty dollars in insurance. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's keep like, it running. Yeah. yeah. I don't care that the air conditioner and the and the radio don't work. Like. Yeah, because your dad realizes he's like, "Why do I want like to buy you something expensive? You're gonna crash it. Then my premiums are gonna go up. And then so here's this. You know what I mean? Or Cherokee. How do I? Get, what am I getting out of this deal? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that yeah. Cherokee. Yeah. Yeah. That thing that didn't have air conditioning. The radio. So when, when you think about it, all you're doing is increasing the chances that your son and or daughter is going to end Fuck up yeah. with a child possibly before. Because you know what I mean? That you oh, get yeah. that, that extra mobility, that extra. You're, it's a rolling bedroom when yeah. you're a teenager. Yeah. yeah. Not, like, that, not that Jeep. That Jeep probably. That Jeep. That I mean, Jeep probably. Not that you couldn't, change. but it was. That Jeep lowered did, It was on you, man. It was like, wow. Like fuck, man! You you pulled it, not the car, not the <laughs> it was literally a box, a maroon box. A I maroon remember. We box. Rolled, yeah, we rolled around in that thing. Yeah, a maroon we to, box. We used to if go you by the like that, then the it was little, like uh, there was like a small airport near the high school. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. Which, uh, John and I used to wait until there was like some there, like a jet was moving. And we'd like drive past it just so we could feel the engine like push the car <laughs> into the next lane. Oh yeah, you gotta uh, love that perfect square uh, G. Oh yeah, yeah. That thing, I don't know how I never died on eighty five with like a simple wind gust because you'd catch right. it. There was no aerodynamics. It was just no. no. You would feel it. You would. <laughs> you'd have to overcorrect. You'd right. really have to just fight the wind. Yeah. And yeah, no air conditioner. Heater worked just fine. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. The roof. It was like discon the fabric was disconnecting yeah, from the ceiling trippy. as the years went on. So it would just we'd open the windows and the whole thing would flap. It was like a sailboat. <laughs> and then uh, I remember um, because we had a, a iPod and you would plug in a uh, an MP3 cord to the iPod and the MP3 connected to a cassette tape, and you'd yeah, put the cassette inside and you could play your iPod. It was real rocket science. How song. long did the styrofoam cup tape to the dash last? That actually lasted a very long time. Yeah, I, I think we... it lasted all through our high school. Career. Yeah, because I think we wrapped <laughs> so... the entire thing in duct tape. Yeah, it was like duct tape yeah, was duct in tape a cup, and then it was just the... like, doof, like right on there. Well, I think yeah. we also wrapped the cup in duct tape, so this whole Possibly, thing was maybe. just like, but, yeah, right? it was like just... a duct tape wallet. The whole yeah. thing was constructed. Yeah. And uh, Well, because I, I remember, yeah, uh john had a um one of the really early mp3 players like mm -hmm. the non-ipod ones and it had like little yeah. cassettes that you could load preload yeah, those little tiny yeah, yeah the little the tiny blue, ones. The blue one yeah um yeah and he used to just like dump that in the cup and like pop the tape in and he'd like listen to it. it was a wasn't it was a walkman that was his right john had the walkman it could yeah it could have been a sony like it was in that time where there was a lot of MP3 players and stuff. Yeah, but he always had like unique shit. So yeah, like, yeah. yeah, it was John, of course. John was always a rocket science with rocket scientist with that shit. And yeah, and like the fucking blow dart, <laughs> the oh, blow gun. I that's in the other room. Hold oh on. my god. Oh uh, man.
found it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Old <laughs> memories. Yeah, this thing, this motherfucker. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Not, now I don't know what to do with it. Um, nah, hanging I don't on the wall. My hands. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. I remember the radio broke when I was a senior because I remember listening to In the Air Tonight by Phil Collins. You know, dun, 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 yeah, dun. Yeah. And I was listening to that with uh, my friend Harry. <coughs> and this, this had to have been like fall 2008, right before, it was like 10 minutes before class started. And, dun, 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 dun. and, and I remember thinking, I think, you know, I think the trailer for Hangover had already come out. So this was probably spring. Okay. But it was Mike Tyson, right? Punching Stu. Sure, sure, so, sure. so, of course, you know, I emulate Mike Tyson. And I punch the radio as hard as I can. Buttons pop out, and it was stuck on 87.9 from there forward. Just I'm surprised the whole thing didn't give up. Like, I'm surprised you didn't punch the fucking dash off at that point. Like, yeah, I'm <laughs> surprised the hit didn't just break everything. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just shuts down in the middle of the street. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that fucking Jeep, dude. I remember, I remember Charlie was driving us to school because John graduated and Charlie was two years behind him, and so I remember Charlie would drive uh, me and Pat. And I remember <laughs> there's this one day on the on I eighty five, which is just, I mean, even that I look back at it and I'm like, the fact that I I drove on that forty five minutes a day to and from, and I'm still alive, yeah. that's right. that's like playing that Russian roulette. Insane. That's because when there were accidents there, they weren't accidents. They were like fatalities. Yeah. Yes, that was right. And, that was a twelve lane highway. And like one fifth of the cars were just like like worse than the Jeep was. You know what it I mean? Just insane. like fucking just missing like everything parts and doors yeah. and shit. And like yeah. A lot of trash absolutely. bag windows. Yeah. Absolutely. And Poor because man. it's Atlanta, it's also as you get closer to Atlanta, like the car, the traffic gets like poorer like actually like less like wealthy yeah yeah yeah. but then there's also people driving out from the yeah. suburbs so like mixed in with like the shitty like multicolored panel exactly. doors very mixed. or like brand new Dude. like mercedes benzes and like oh, and aston martin every once in a while between like the last the Jeep and yeah. a van <laughs> the last time i went to the state to, to atlanta i think it was uh i want to say it was like my aunt's aunt's wake or something um we let we uh i uh, rented like a black five liter mustang to drive around uh atlanta with and so because it was actually cheap as shit because <laughs> it was a stick so yeah. like they're like oh okay like nobody wants to rent this for the most part like yeah. people who just come so like here you can have it it's like like fucking it was like the same as like an economy car and anyways i'm like driving around uh decatur probably and like Again, I think it was I off of I eighty five, but like I know what you're talking about. Where that like, yeah, parts of the city like come together like a river. You know what I mean? You ever seen those like nature documentaries where like yeah, yeah. part Tribute of like Harry's the silt, S-U-R-E. the silt. Yeah. <laughs> it's exactly like that. That's the a whole way to mud say water it. where it's like, and you this can see a, the river. That's what I eighty five is like, right? Just all can, around the fucking. You can see Atlanta. all the su- you can see all the sugar loaf yeah. and Saint Ives right. and. Exactly. Where the up St. Marcos, you can see where all yeah. these like all these private uh country club traffic right, 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 mixes right, right, with right. like the projects. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and it so, stays divided. I was I was like heading down, I uh, just like passed like some fast food or whatever, and I uh, stopped at a red light and I look across and it's like another kind of I guess I dressed like an upper middle class or whatever. It is another like black guy upper middle class but in the exact same black mustang five liter and we like pass each other and we're just like yeah oh. <laughs> it was, oh. it was the most like fucking hilarious moment in atlanta traffic that was like cool and peaceful and like not a fucking issue you know that i've yeah. ever been in. it was hilarious i remember i remember charlie driving us and uh and i remember we're driving and it's like you know that seven to seven forty-five a.m. just death rat race that is I eighty-five. The the way the sun's rising, you're just blinded. Yeah. You're in six lanes of traffic. You can't see. You're in this b- crawling or like F one racing. 
Like <laughs> none of the others. But right? like all all in the same like five lanes. Like yes, these two yeah. lanes, F1, these three. Oh, yeah. Everybody trying to get off and shit. Yes, yeah. Trying to join the F1. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't even that everything slowed and everything sped together. It was it was That's dead stop. Yeah. It was yeah, dead no, I know. stop. I know. Like you could get off the car and like turn around and like tie your child's shoe. Right. And next to you was boom. Yeah, you literally because I remember to your, it to I remember your car it. would you could feel there was yeah. as it yeah. passed there was a slight vacuum in air but not even like the Jeep yeah. any car you could be in a big ass suburban and it would right. yeah, it yeah. would in slow motion so a car would pass and whatever you were in would move towards where that thing passed yeah granted maybe a tenth of an inch but enough that you felt it. yeah go down the line yeah. and an 18 wheeler would go by and you'd be like boom yeah 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 <laughs> Boom, boom. It has like the worst setup for worst setup. Well, yeah. And people are trying to awful. get off into that. Yeah, I know. I want a part of this. So they're going zero to just you just hold right. your foot on the but I remember so we were going one morning and I remember like it was coming to like a stop. Or no no no. I remember no, it, it came to a stop and I remember the Jeep wouldn't start up. And it I remember Charlie was like what? stalled out. Charlie was like, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> And like, so cars start flying by us in all directions. And I'm just like sitting there and I'm closing my eyes. And I'm like, well, you know, at the time I was like, well, you know, I'm 17. I was like, you know, what have I seen in my life? And I'm like, well, you know, I, I did get to kiss a girl when I was 16. I'm like, okay. And, you know, like, and then like he got it started up again. And I remember I was like, Whew, thank you, God in heaven. And I remember I was like, Charlie, can we just like get off 85 in case it happens again? And he was like, nah. I was like, okay, <laughs> and like, because it well, wasn't because a... yeah, he's like, no, we want to get there, like, yeah, that's I love, like, don't get me wrong, I love the city of Atlanta, but whoever the fuck planned it out needs to be like dug up, shot, and <laughs> that's the thing, <laughs> buried is, I think, again. Like, the thing is, I think those most, people. Holy thing shit. is, is I think most of the people that did plan Atlanta were burned and shot, and they, oh the god, like, I think it's, I think General Sherman did that. I feel like it's. How, how fuck i've explained people because like i live i live in toronto toronto is just a grid city you know where south is because that's the lake and there's a gigantic tower that you like can see for miles and miles yeah. and mi it's like you know it's what i mean the end tower right yeah it's one of the biggest like, one of the biggest in the third world third or fourth now because there's other but like yeah. one of the huge biggest freestanding all those been freaking since, oil countries taking our top buildings 70s it's or mad. something like it's they built mad. it the cn tower is insane yeah yeah, but it's just like a communications tower. It just yeah, it doesn't do anything other than give us good perception. But so like it's super easy once you get the flow of Toronto to like know in, in your head exactly where you are mentally. You know what I mean? If I give you an intersection or whatever. But Atlanta, it's like what? Like because like you think you're like on a road, but unless you know where the other road is, like in relation to where you are, you don't know how far down the road you are because there's no grid. It just kind of shows up. Yeah, like peach tree intersecting with like another peach tree. Yeah, peach tree like, industrial with like peach tree parkway. Right. Avenue, exactly, road, exactly. Drive. And I'm pretty sure there's one that actually circles back onto itself. Like it's uh -huh. fucking ridiculous. And then some of them, and then some of them, they don't even merge. Right. Some of them just change names at or a they mile split. Market. Like they'll start one here, and then it'll, you'll hit like Buford Highway, and then it'll like continue like two miles north. <laughs> like well, what the shit is going yeah. on? I don't. Yeah. Hey, I don't mind the ones that all merge on Spaghetti Junction. That's fine. It's like That's they're fine. all you know coming in to yeah. one. They're all coming yes. into eighty five. Are you going yes. north or are you going south? Right. Petri Industrial was Petrie Industrial for like 85 miles. Right. And then, not even as you got near Spaghetti Junction, it was still a couple miles from there, it just changed names. Not at a, not at a break. No not warning. Split, not even yeah. at a hill or a stoplight. There's just like a mile marker. In between two like red lights at some point. <laughs> it, it's just at one point you're driving and yeah, it's no. just, you know when you're driving into a new state and your GPS is like, welcome to Delaware. Right. And, it's like there's not a street sign. You're just like, oh, I've crossed, no, I've yeah. crossed the, I've crossed the area on the the coordinates on yes. of this planet. I have crossed into a new jurisdiction. Mm. Welcome to you know, just in the middle of a highway. You're like, oh, yeah, you might have a sign, a maybe couple miles in, and even yeah. that is not completely accurate, right? No, no, no. Petrie Industrial just, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's it's, but it's there is a massive road that just at some point you're just no longer there. And there's no, yeah. you are now on X highway. No. Just signs start popping up that just say 
X highway. Right. And you're like, when did I merge? And you're just like, you're like, oh, we just right. And and it wouldn't be so bad if it was like a completely straight road that went. You know what I mean? That would oh, be fine because you'd be like, I'm that. still going east, so it's like whatever, you know. But oh. like, no, it doesn't work that way. No. And, <laughs> We're gonna change direction and name. There's, there's, <laughs> like, fuck you. There's almost a poetic disaster to it. Right. Mm-hmm. Because when you see something planned out like a grid, even Manhattan, for as crazy as it is, pretty gritty, mm-hmm. except for, and I don't mean that as like gritty, but like, I understand what you mean. GRID, G-R-I-D. Dash, <laughs> y, <laughs> dash Y, gritty, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a, uh, except for maybe like lower Manhattan, where you can see where everything's built on like landfill and like dredged up land, where it's like they kind of, you can see where it expanded piecemeal, right? right? You get all these, right? Maybe you get a, you know, whatever. But as opposed to like a centrally planned thing, you can almost what it is, is it's very like cancer esque and that it just grew when growing was necessary. And then when growing was not necessary and or possible, the growth stopped and there was zero planning for the next thing. It's Mm -hmm. just that's the event horizon. Who knows what's coming? And you also have to look at the like area. It was also really fucking uh woodsy like there's trees everywhere yeah. and it's hilly so yeah. it's like it's super awkward to to build out of atlanta i feel that the whole yeah. area of georgia is an awkward place to like try to grid yeah because right? like you would end up it would almost end up being like san francisco where they had to like cut into hills and just to make a fucking road go straight you know what i mean <laughs> it's <laughs> like so and it, but the hills aren't that high so it's just really awkward like that's what I noticed. It's always like you're always going up and down, and it, it always seems like next to you is like a, a jungle, mm-hmm. but on the other side is like a strip mall. But like you can't see it. Yeah, <laughs> it's just remember? like the yeah. thickest of forest. It's right? odd. Yeah, and the entire time in the distance, there's just like <laughs> the haze of Atlanta, well, this like metropolitan yeah. with the busiest air at the time, the busiest airport in the world. Right but next to you is like bubba's grits and shrimp exactly and then there's what looks like woods that have not been touched in 410 million years when when we used to go up to the war monument chase's uh like place he he lived in like one of those like a neighborhood like yours was in atlanta like, like but no uh no golf or anything so it was just forest and i remember we went up there for like halloween and we're of course we were egging people we were like fucking guerrilla fighters, man. Like, cause we could, there was no way anyone was going to catch us because yeah. everything was so heavily forested. Yeah. We would roll up behind people's yards and just hail, you know, those big fucking cathedral windows people in mm-hmm. Atlanta have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We just like start at the top and make our way down. <laughs> and like, we sit there for five minutes. And by the time they're like, oh, because they can see us because we're like a thousand yards away <laughs> in darkness. And then we just like, just like dash away and there's no way because nothing is grid everything is like a, a weird tree a weird roots exactly Again, exactly so you would just be dumping and there's n- nobody has like fences usually yeah so you'd be fucking booking it across people's backyards mm. and their backyards are so big that even if their lights go on in the back they don't even reach you no and so you're just like running around all five and, little assholes throwing yeah. <laughs> yeah and right and it's it's not even that the roads in atlanta are also like squiggly it's like yeah. they themselves are like five lane roads exactly. so it's like you're in like what looks like a pristine like 18th hole mm-hmm. and then like 35 feet away there are like five marta buses yes and like someone panhandling and saying like bless you sir exactly. like if that wasn't a lesson in like urban warfare of just right. how messy a civil war would get right. it's like well that's why like, go to atlanta. Atlanta. it's impossible to take right it's yeah. not a city. And I don't think it would be a, a, a city that could easily be sieged by numbers. Which is why in the Civil War, they just burned it. Exactly. They're like, we're not no. taking oh, it. Oh, yeah. No, right? I'm aware. Yeah, it's like Hiroshima. <laughs> They're like, we're not taking it. Exactly. Just get rid of it. That's why I'm moving to Japan. <laughs> I'm moving to Japan because yeah. you can't take it. <laughs> not, a bad, not, a bad not a bad tactical move. Not a bad tactical move. No. But, yeah. I mean... Things about that Jeep, dude, would just, yeah. I, back to the Jeep. I remember, but yeah. on that day, I remember it shut down like four or five separate times, yeah, and I was perfect. just like, I was like, we're gonna die. And then just, and then it kept working towards the end. It was just fine after that. 
I mean, <laughs> well, because like old cars do shit like that sometimes. They're just like they have attitudes. Fuel pumps just like not quite making that connection or something. You know what I mean? That probably could have been it. a little bit of an attitude. Yeah, that's what they have. Just a little bit of an. I've attitude. done that before. Yeah. Like and turned yeah. too hard left and like a sensor went loose and the whole thing just shut down. I'm like, oh, okay. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I remember uh I remember my senior year, one of my best friends was next to me in his brand new like Toyota, whatever it was. Uh, it was like a pickup. Mm-hmm. And I remember he came right next to me and I was in the driver's seat with the door open right at the end right at the end of the school day, and I had like the door open, it was whatever. I remember we were in the senior parking lot facing those like Hispanic like apartments, those like minority apartments. You know, there's like there's the fence, hill, road, and there they are. It's like to your left is like the highway, to the right yeah, yeah, is the yeah. football field, and you're yeah, facing. Yeah, yeah. And I remember he came up to me, and just like he was like he was like gross, and I was like what? And he was like he was holding his hand, and I was like hey, he's gonna show me something gross. But he had unzipped his pants and put his balls in his hand, and he was like, look what I found. <laughs> And I was like, and the car was, it was, sorry, it was already running and I had it in reverse, but had like my foot on the brake and I was like texting or something on my shitty flip phone and the door was open. And so it's me in the driver's seat door open yeah. and he's, and then, then his truck right there. And he, so he's locked into truck Jeep door and I already have it in reverse and my foot's just on the brake. <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to clothesline this motherfucker for going here my balls right? Right, right right forgetting that i had cut really hard that morning to park uh-huh. so i floor it he gets out of the way i don't know how he well because you would have probably pulled the door away from his truck right because you're cocked out no well the way it was is well no what happened was is the door got caught on his truck oh oh shit okay. as i floored it and completely it took the handle of the door and touched the front left light on my oh, Jeep. Shit. So I completely almost ripped the door off. It was flattened against the Jeep. It was flattened <laughs> again. Like, yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. You bent the hinge out, definitely. And, and gouged his truck across all <laughs> the panels. And I remember everyone just went, oh. Yeah. And I, and I put it in drive and I went right back into my footprint and i got out and i remember i just took it and as hard, and this is probably when i was like powerlifting the most in my life and i was like a meathead and i remember i took it and i just pushed as hard as i could and they're like tommy tommy you know? and i pushed and i just remember it made these like two distinct it went clunk and i got a back halfway and then it went clunk and i slammed it shut and it wasn't even lined up no <laughs> i just at that point. and i just like <laughs> you know i kind of gave it a couple of just like Whoa! yeah and it stayed there and it never opened again Right, it was probably just like stuck in the latch, and then the pressure from it wanting to pull back out made it. Probably, I don't know. Probably pretty safe. I mean, tactically, <laughs> yeah. never opened again. So as long like, as like there's no, yeah. As long as that hinge doesn't let go, it I mean, might pop open. I mean, it was. I mean, short of like welding, it was stuck. And uh, I remember that. Luckily, my friend. Uh, luckily, my friend, uh, his dad was cool, and I was like. You don't have to pay for it. Like, you're a dipshit. And he was like, I imagine your dad's going to kill you anyway for destroying the Jeep. And I was like, yeah. Well, because I got the door shut, I just didn't say anything (laughs) for like three or four days. Yeah. And I remember Patrick, because I would drive him home, obviously, to our home where I lived with him. So I remember I was just like, don't say a fucking word. He was like, whatever, man. I want like, no... always parking it passenger side away from the house. Like <laughs> always <laughs> kind basketball of, net. Always yeah. just kind of like weird, not saying anything. Yeah. And in the morning I would kind of like circle around it and then I would like hop in over the passenger seat and you have to right. climb over the, the, the armrest. <laughs> and then I'd always just kind of do it quickly. Yeah. And um and the window sorry and the window wouldn't go down either. So you just no, yeah. no, the window went down. Sorry, the window went down. But everything else about it was fucked. And I remember finally, I think, like, my dad went over to it at some point and was just looking at it. He was, like, having a beer. And he was just kind of walking around. And I remember he went and, like, pulled on it. And it was, like, uh, it, like, it, like, popped. Yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) And he just kind of looked at it. And I think he came inside and said, what happened? And I just told him. And he goes, I'm not buying anything new. 
And I said, I'm fine with it. And he said, okay. So I took it. And for a second time, I think I needed his help. And we like, and like got it back in. And he was like, well, I would reckon you just don't open that door. And I was like, I haven't for a couple of days. (laughs) And he was like, you can buy a new one. And I was in my mind, I was like, I'm going to college in like eight weeks. And Patrick was like, yo, I want a new door. And I was like, sucks to suck. (laughs) I'm just like, Patrick, poor fucking Patrick. Poor Patrick. So he just had the nicest one. The oh, nicest it's... one of us all. You know what? I don't feel bad because he's tall and handsome and is engaged. Oh, is he? Yeah, he's tall, handsome, smart, has a good job, and is engaged to a beautiful woman. So I have no sympathy retroactively for him. As I am well, shorter, I will never. Nice yeah, that's yeah, that's where getting <laughs> that's where being a nice guy gets you. Good job. Because like good I education. had you, the four of you like pegged as like. Because, like, I was slightly old. I was, like, a teenager, and I would have been, like, look at these kids. You know what I mean? At that time. Like, Charlie was, like, close enough at that point. But, like, yeah, you and Pat, it was, like, the little kids. Ba- little babies. The kids, yeah. <laughs> and all I remember is, yeah, I, I have distinct memories of the three of you. It's, like, Charlie, I saw more of because he would, uh, he was at Pi as well. We were mm-hmm. there, too. Yeah. Um, but with you, it was mostly, like, when I'd come to your place and John and I would play like PlayStation or something, yeah. and you were like hovering behind us, like, I want to play you fuckers. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Trying to prove myself at something. Like, or just like saying some like bullshit would, or like, yeah, yeah remember, just I would, like some I would smart. Always, yeah. I'd always swear at John. Smart and ass friends, shit. And like, John, I felt like, like, shut I, up, Tom. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember I'd always, I would, well, no, John was always very cool. And I yeah. remember, and I remember like, I'd always but try just to push push try yeah. to almost like prove yourself yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. i'd You're walk in you guys be cool playing video games and i'd be yeah, like yeah. you guys won't be saying anything and i'll be like fuck you yeah yeah, yeah. kind of look at me and be like okay. but like i had to like prove myself <laughs> yeah. like, just like, i don't have right. a car yeah. i can't drink i don't have a girlfriend right and you probably heard us talking about all this shit like yeah. oh it's a someone's party or like so bullshit, I'd right? swear yeah. I'd i get like, it fuck yeah 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 be like, but then i remember specifically just pat like I stayed over one time and got up in the morning and Pat's like, Do you want some coffee, Rob? I'm like, Yeah, all right, man. <laughs> he just like made me a full pot of coffee. But I was like, Who is this kid and why is he making me? Like, I, how does yeah. he even know how to do this? Right. Because he's an angel. I love yeah, him. he was like super stupid. My little brother got all of the sweetness that Charlie and I did. Yeah. John had all of his own. John was yeah. John was wonderful. And yeah, yeah. Patrick still is wonderful. Charlie and I didn't get any of the sweetness. Yeah, you guys are more the curmudgeons. Yeah. You're more grumpy. Like, yeah. 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 Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I would definitely say, uh, yeah, I think I was an asshole. And I don't say that in some, like, rose-tinted glasses. Like, I was the... No, I say that in, like, shame. I'm like, I was an asshole. I think it it just comes from, like, being in a family of more than one. Like, because it's hard to... like everybody has their own personality but like it's hard to necessarily shine when you have like older brothers or older siblings and they're all like you're very you guys were close in age right mm-hmm. so it's it's almost yeah like i get why everybody had to have their own way of doing things and john benefited from being the oldest so he could just like be who he was you know what i mean and just like yeah, yeah fuck you man literally john would just yeah. play himself out get the fuck out of my room i'm gonna play you out <laughs> yeah, yeah seriously leave yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's true <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get out of my room dum, 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 dum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sitting on the floor, like, yeah. Yeah. Like, fucking clay pool playing in the background. I was about to say, yeah, with his, his custom clay pool shirt. Yeah. His Tommy Dude, the Cat. Tommy this the Cat. is his. I don't know if I ever told you that. He oh, really? this here when he came to visit. Yeah. And he, I was just like, all right, it's mine now. Mine now. <laughs> yep. yeah. It was, okay. It is ratty as fuck, and as soon as it gets, like, literally as it falls off me, I will cut out the, like, logos and patch them on a, on a jacket. Good. That's what I want to hear. Yeah, that's what I want to hear. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, I remember. He, yeah, I remember. That's where he introduced. I vividly remember like going into his room and him introducing me to Primus mm-hmm. and being like, "Have you ever heard this?" And it was Tommy the Cat. Yeah. And like Tommy the Cat's my name, and I say him to the. And I remember he and I would just laugh hysterically because it was like that's not what a bass is supposed to sound like. Because right. Les Claypool was is was is I think he's probably still alive. Still around. 
a god and i as someone that didn't know anything about music but i remember he did was just like how the fuck is this guy playing a bass like that and i just remember thinking like i vividly remember he and i just sitting there laughing just like laughing and laughing and laughing because it was like this guy it's it's like a, it's like laughing as you see like michael jordan hit like the 30th like three pointer in a row because it's just right. like he's too good there's almost nothing to do but laugh well he loved like he was he loved absurdist shit yeah like whether it was comedy or music he loved yeah. that kind of shit but it had to be like high level it wasn't like he didn't like garbage he um, wasn't a, he wasn't a hipster in that the only value he put in things is that no, no, no. unknown right it had to be unknown but it also had to it's it kind of he, he, he and i were similar in that regard that's why we got along as friends like that because it was so easy for us to talk not like we we're like oh, did you hear like we weren't one-upping each other we were like hey i know this thing what about you? Do you know this thing? And he'd be like, no, I don't. Know. And we would, it was always an exchange of like cool shit that we both didn't know about yeah. from each other's background. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but there was never any like, Oh, I know this, you know that, or like, no, man, it was, it was just like the best person to, to bounce ideas and shit off of. He really was the best man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just, I still get sad thinking about him. I remember it was summer 2008, I think. Mm-hmm. Maybe I remember my parents were out of town, and I had acquired a a a, a Gatorade bottle full of vodka, like an adult. Mm-hmm. And I remember I was sitting there in the kitchen, looking at wait, looking at the the oven light, waiting for it to hit midnight. And it was um, it wasn't July? Was it Veterans Day? Maybe it was July Fourth. I don't remember what it was. It was one of like America. Mm-hmm. When's Veterans? Veterans is Veterans is the fall, right? Oh. Doesn't matter. Let's. I think we have it's, Remembrance Day, which is November, or no, November 11th. Yeah. No. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was whatever it was. Is it was. So I think it was July 4th. I was waiting for it to turn July 4th. And I remember he came down. And I was like, "What you doing?" And I was like, "Waiting to celebrate America." And you know, John was like, "What's in that bottle?" And I was like, "Vodka." It was like a big bottle, like a 32 mm. ounce Gatorade. And he was like, you going to drink it all? And I was like, no. Do you want to help me? And he was like, yeah. And he was like, what are we doing to celebrate America? And I had pulled up on the computer in the other room. I had pulled up Battlefield 1942. And what I wanted to do, I, I had no intention of anyone joining me. I had no, I thought everyone was asleep. And I remember I was sitting there just like sitting at the counter, just like looking at the clock, 1158, 59, midnight. And I went in and it was, uh, if anyone that's ever played Battlefield 1942, it was one of like the Pacific Island maps. It was like, uh, it was like, uh, I, remember, I forget what it is, uh, to- Tobruk Island. I think that was the level. This video game is like 15 years old at this, at, at, at this yeah, point as of this story. Yeah. And it was just a shitty game, but you could do like two player where someone flew the fighter jet, the like whatever, and someone mm-hmm. sat in the back with the 50 cal. Yeah. And he was like, what are we doing for like, what are we going to celebrate? And I was like, we're going to celebrate like World War II. <laughs> he was like, all right. And I just remember him and I just getting shit faced and <laughs> sitting next to each other, playing on the computer. I was flying around. He was like gunning down like the Japanese zeros. Yeah. And I remember he, he was like, I know where mom and dad's wine is. So like after we tore <laughs> through the vodka, John went and got like a bottle of wine. Jeez. And he had, I remember he had two cigars. And so we like clipped the cigars then we were like, we walked down the, like the, we walked down to the road where we lived on at like three in the morning, pissed drunk, drinking out of, passing a bottle of wine back and forth to each other. And I didn't know anything. So I'm smoking, I'm inhaling like the cigar shit and I'm getting sick. I'm getting nauseous. Yeah, man. And, and we, I remember we walked to the end of the road and I remember like we got to the end. I remember I just threw up and I like projectile vomited like all over a stop sign. And I remember he was like, nice. And I was like, nice. And I remember, I think he like football spiked the wine bottle. And I remember going home and the next day was just so, it just felt like such shit. But that always sticks out in me as one of my favorite memories with my brother is just to me that encompasses John, like him coming down to maybe get like, you know, a serving of whatever was for dinner, you know, just a midnight serving and him seeing me and me being like, no, I'm about to get like blackout drunk. And like without missing a beat, he was just like, "Cool, can I join?" And I was like, "Yes, you can." And yeah, that's like one of my fun. Always ones. like, yeah, it's weird. Like, cause like you're saying shit that really 
now that like it's been years right since since we met and like all of these things that we did together but it's weird that like you're telling me this and i'm like they're matching up with like exactly what i was like he always loved adventure and just like like that's what we fucking did dude like friday yeah. night because most of us weren't allowed out like monday to friday yeah most of us didn't yeah. have any social life it was like do your schoolwork and yes. da, da, da. and like yeah. then we were allowed out on the weekends but like it usually started friday night and I think your brother used to, a lot of the time would say he's staying at my place because I lived in Chambly. Like I lived right down, um, like right near Buckhead and like all that shit was like really close to me. And I think a lot of people who went to Pius lived closer to me than they did cl- like live close to you guys. So he would come like park the Jeep at my place and we would usually just like chill and like dick around watching like nonsense at my place during the day and then as soon as it got like six o'clock it's like all right let's hop in the truck fucking yeah. let's go look for some adventure and, shit. Yeah. and yeah. like there's always somebody having a party or like someone doing something there and like my parent my aunt and uncle my aunt was strict but my uncle was really cool about things so it's like don't get caught by the police don't drink and drive don't like it was like don't don't not have a good time but yeah. just don't be fucking stupid man yeah and so when john and i went to parties we would do that we would drink you know and usually we'd cut each other off at like 12 1 and then we'd be like all right let's fucking pass out for three or four hours you know I mean? yeah be okay right and then like shuffle out amongst the, all the fucking like passed out bodies and shit and then we'd like roll back to my place and then my uncle's like you guys uh have fun last night yeah <laughs> you know yeah yeah exactly yeah so, like yeah we always had a good time um you good for like 15 more minutes yeah man absolutely i remember when i moved to maine my junior year so this would have been like August, September, 2007, I think. And I remember I was obviously a new kid and just like fucking hated it. Like didn't want to be there. Just wanted to be back in Atlanta. It was like, you know, obviously in the middle of high school it was, you know, mm-hmm. you know, it doesn't really help with all of like the teenage hormones of just being like, oh, I fucking does. don't want to hear, be a, hear a, you know, I hate you mom and dad, you know, fuck yeah. you. And in hindsight, it's like, that they're you know it's it's getting a better job to provide for their family but of course in a self-centered 17 year old said i'm like fuck you you are literal nazis you know and but so i remember going up there and like i hated it there i used to eat lunch in like the bathroom stall because i was like i didn't even attempt to make new friends i was like i don't even want to you know do it and i was like i knew how to do it i've moved around a lot in my life i knew how to like go out on the playground and be like gotta make new friends and like when i put my mind to it i could do it but i remember I remember there I was just kind of like, I've had enough. I don't want to do it. And so it was like really tough. My little brother like slipped in really fine. It's still friends with a lot of his friends. Yeah. Um, but I remember I really resisted it. And uh, it was like that fall, I think maybe like November, December. And I remember like my family or my, my parents went like up to where one of the lake houses we'd been visiting for 20 years mm. at that point. And I remember they went up. And like, uh, I was like, the house is like, the house is empty. And I remember John being like, you should throw a party. And I was like, I don't want to throw a party. Cause John had taken a year off of college and he had come home. And I was like, I don't want to throw a party. He was like, man, he was like, look, and we ended up only living there for like a total of nine months before he moved back into the same house in Atlanta. And then I went back to bias, which was a weird thing. But like, it was at that time, we didn't know that. I thought I was just there forever. And I was like, I don't want him. And he, I remember he was like, dude, he was like, I know you don't want to be here and you're pissed off, but he was like, just make some friends. It'll, 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 be, it'll make the stay easier. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, I don't, I was like, how do I, like, I don't want to, he was like, well, why don't you just throw a party? And I was like, I mean, I guess I could. He was like, mom and dad aren't here. They're not going to be here for another like three days. He's like, how would I just go buy you like 120 something beers and have over a couple friends? And I was like, okay. So I invited over like four or five friends and I remember we just got shit faced playing like beer pong. It was like our like American pie right, right. girls came over, you know, like people were like hooking up in bathrooms and it was like, I got to live like the American. And I remember it, it did make the rest of my time there. Cause I remember I made friends and uh, I remember we got so fucked up that we went, <laughs> we went out at like fuck like four in the morning and 
there are these like really nice like stone because it's in Maine. There are these really nice like stone walls around these big houses. Mm-hmm. We went out at like four in the morning, and I remember we just it was like temporary spray pay. It was spray pay, spray paint. Spray paint. Jesus Christ, I'm having a stroke. But I remember we went out and we just spray painted dicks, just multicolored <laughs> neon dicks all over all of it. And then we even went to the fire station and spray painted a dick like on the garage. And I remember we we came back in and like the next morning, like everyone left. But I I always remember that like for the rest of my time at that high school, I had like a group of friends after that because I it's like I cemented myself as like. I remember they're like, oh, like he's cool. Like we got blackout drunk and spray painted cocks all over a firehouse. And it like, that's like another just like positive story I have of John. He was like, I know you don't want to, but he's like, it's going to make your time here easier if you just, because he was like, look, mom and dad are gone. And like you and I have already planned on getting drunk. Mm-hmm. But he's like, we're not even doing anything new. And I was that's like, true. that's true. So yeah, I just remember we got drunk and, uh, that's yeah. I think that was the weekend he introduced me to Aqua Teen Hunger Force. That that was the same year he went up and visited you, actually. Yeah, with the in the rabbit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The wabbit. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was fucking awesome. That was a good time. Yeah. I remember that. I remember driving home like after we been downtown Toronto again. We did like exactly the same thing we did in high school. We got shit faced early, and then we just hung out, no, waited out. till it was okay to go back. Yeah. <laughs> fucking ended up heading back home with the rising sun. Right? So yeah, it was uh, it was that except like fucking Bob O'Reilly was on. I'm like hauling down with like fucking six cylinder Pontiac. Like <laughs> yeah, team fucking Bob O'Reilly. You're like rocking on the on the radio. That was uh, that was a good time. Fuck yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. I remember, yeah. Yeah, Aqua Teen Hunger Force, what the other one he and I used to watch. Venture Brothers. Venture Brothers. Venture yeah. Brothers, yeah. That whole like block of like uh yeah. Swim. Yeah. Like, fucking amazing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, those are and those are just some like positive if you can't tell, I've been thinking of John a lot lately. Yeah. And that, those are some things that have just been like like positive memories that have just been cemented in my mind, like mm-hmm. waiting until like, and for no other reason than it was like, it was like our own fight club, but like wait for mom and dad to go to bed. And we, like, we would watch venture brothers. And I remember yeah. he, he had like this bottle of like Belvedere vodka and we would take like, we would take one shot and then we'd put some like, uh, we'd put some like THC in it. We'd like boil it in. And so I remember we'd make this THC tincture out of a oh. shot and it wasn't enough to get like fucked up, Okay, but it was almost like that Keith moon advice for, right. Is that him? You know, Keith Richardson. Uh, uh, yeah. That? Where he was like, people, someone was like, how do you just very bluntly? Someone was like, how, how do you use like stayed alive all of these years? Basically, right. you know? And he was like, I think it was like paraphrasing. He was like, catch a buzz and enjoy the buzz, but don't always be going for the high. Cause that's what kills you. Sure. 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 And I remember John and I would like, I, that's like before I ever knew who he was, but like in hindsight, I can see that's what we were doing is like, we didn't, which is very absurd for me, someone that like can't do anything in moderation. I remember, but that was like, he and I would just, we'd catch a buzz and we wouldn't do it every night. We'd do it like two, two nights a week. And we did it for like six months or something where we'd take a shot of vodka, we'd boil in some THC and everyone John had it in this like little glass vial. Mm. Like, droop, droop, and we put it in and it was just very it was there was like the whole rit- like that's also something they say about like drug addicts is like you get addicted to the ritual not that's just true. the so we would like we had like these like saucers we had these like little like teacups and we'd like measure out shots and we put them in and it was like dink dink and then we'd like we'd pull up his like shitty laptop and pull up venture bros and it was just we'd, we'd just sip on it and we'd just catch a nice buzz nothing too much just a buzz yeah and who knows maybe that's just like nostalgia where you look back at memories and you think they're better than they were and maybe they were maybe if i could go back to it right now i'd be like yeah this is i don't okay. think it's like okay I, I don't think you can look at you have to look at things as they are right like mm-hmm. your feelings are your feelings regardless of what like the reality you know what i mean you experience the, the present experience. memory is what it exactly. is exactly exactly you experience what you experience john experience we John experienced and you guys experienced that thing together like um when I look because like I also suffer 
from myself from like yes overindulgence i can't just like mm-hmm. you know kind of do something yeah um addiction right like mm-hmm. my family has suffered from addiction my sister's addicted to crack cocaine my grandfather's an alcoholic like my mom flirted with like everybody on my mom's side of the family smoked basically so like there's a heavy addiction i smoked for most of my life um i smoked pot like i've never done hard drugs only because it's like i know my personality know. And yeah it terrifies I know. me, I know. That's me it. too um, me too i know it's the end so i wouldn't even bother um I, I don't drink alcohol like the amount of alcohol i drink in a year is like fucking like literally less than a two four of beer mm-hmm. is how much i probably drink in a year yeah. um, i'll go through like phases where like if a holiday around holiday times and shit Hol- like that holiday. there'll be a couple i'll buy a six right pack now. you know what i mean yeah. and i'll like it'll take me 12 days to get through it yeah uh, and, and those will usually be like sporadic nights like one night i'll be like oh, i'm staying up i'm gonna game all night till 3 a.m and i'll have like two beers yeah and a coffee yeah like, that's my yeah, fucking, yeah, yeah. Like, that's my like big but like for me it's mostly weed right so yeah. like oh, i might have like two beers one coffee and like five bong reps the whole <laughs> that'll be like a seven hour like period yeah. of gaming yeah. session and then i'll be like the next day i'll be like oh, uh, okay i don't feel like garbage like it's not like i drank all night but it's like okay i'm not gonna do that for a little bit. <laughs> yeah that's that's how i am right now there's and like cutting out the cigarettes helped a lot you don't realize like i don't, I don't know if you ever smoked or not no like, i smoked a lot and like when you you realize that most of the hangovers like the cigarettes after a while really it's not the alcohol interesting yeah. Yeah, i think i've smoked a handful of cigarettes in my life it's not even like it's not worth doing i don't think and i've the, the smoked hook is bad. so bad once it gets set in there and for me it was set from like youth right because my mom always smoked around me grandparents always smoked around me so i was inhaling that shit like i remember my first cigarette i like took it out of my uncle's pack it was in it was like i was staying over at his place it was late i stayed up late took it out of his pack but I remember that, like, you know, that, like, feeling of anxiety you get. They're like, oh, fuck, 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 fuck. Fuck what Cigarettes are great. Like, cigarettes create that. And so they quell it, but it's, like, only temporary. Do you understand? So, like, mm-hmm. for me, who grew up with people smoking, I inadvertently inherited that, like, nicotine addiction. Okay. So it would cause me a lot of anxiety when I was at my dad's because I usually lived with my dad. Nobody smoked there. But I'm, like, a smoker who doesn't smoke do you know what i mean mm-hmm. so like i'm having these like panic attacks and all this shit while i'm at my dad's and it's affecting like my school work and all of this nonsense and then when i get back to my mom's it's like i'm living in that breathing in that environment so by the time i was like 13 i think i remember stealing cigarettes from my uncle and being like a fucking champ like everybody talks about like their first cigarette and they're like eh, eh, eh. and i like fucking took that shit like, lit it up and fucking smoked it was like i was like all right cool like whoa <laughs> like my head was like whoa but like within 20 minutes i was like i could go for another one of those yeah. like it was fucking like that yeah and it's yeah. been a struggle my whole life like i just not maybe six months ago not even six months ago like fully quit again and it's like it, it's fucking hard sucks yeah. so much especially if you grew up like having any kind of anxiety or anything like that it's like fuck. yeah that's how i am with like that's how i am with like beer yeah or any alcohol i stay i just stay away from liquor because it's just bad news bears for me but like it's beer like better off yeah yeah. I with, get like, it, man. yeah with beer for me it's the same as you there's like i don't know i'd say like two or three nights a year for like the past yeah. five years if even maybe two mm-hmm. where it's like yeah, like I'm it for me, and it's like my big night. It's like I'm gonna play video games all night. Yeah, exactly. Right, and it's like you know, but even then, I can start to feel it, where yeah. it's like I want another beer. I want an, and I call, I won't touch liquor, but I'll have another beer, another beer, right? And I'll get I'll get drunk and I'll enjoy yeah. it. But the next day, I wake up and I'm like kind of shaky, and I'm like, whoo, whoo, like ooh, and it's like I feel, I feel nauseated yeah nauseous yeah. sick yeah. everything kind of hurts i'm a little yeah, anxious yeah. i'm like what did i do last night who did i text and yeah i'm like my stomach hurts nothing water doesn't even taste good right. and what i always note is like the little demon on my shoulder that's like just have another beer you'll be fine and that's when that's, i'm like stop exactly that's what i'm like exactly. that's when i'm like kill it now kill it now and it's enough that i'll do yeah. it and then i won't want to touch it for like yeah. six more months but yeah, man, it's a, 
it's that's why i always buy in like small portions. yes <laughs> yeah exactly. yeah don't 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 have it all there it's yeah i mean like i know what you're talking about like i yeah. vividly remember yeah. in college one time just like having a couple like drinks like it was like during a like a winter break or something and i was living in the frat house and i remember it was just like a normal day of like i think i had work that day or whatever and i remember i had like a couple drinks and i just remember i was like i texted like my best friend who's like still my best friend went to middle school high school with and uh i remember I, this was like winter 2010 and i remember texting him and i was like i was like ah, just having like a i was like having a couple of drinks and he was like nice nice and i was like i love a couple of drinks and i was like because i just get the feeling of everything's fine everything's gonna be okay and i remember he was like he was like man that he was like that sounds like that sounds like anxiety and me being me i was like fuck you i don't have anxiety i'm invincible i'm tommy i work out i'm gonna go to med school like a douche and like a the angel that this individual is he was like sure like all right you know it's all right like i know you i've known you for 10 years at this point like i know this is what you're gonna do so i'm not gonna fight it but i always remember that yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 i always remember that because I was like, you know why I love a couple of drinks? And he was like, just, you know, let loose. You know, it's the weekend. It's semester's over. It's winter break. And I was like, no, because I get this this wave of everything's going to be okay. And I remember he was like, yeah. Dick, did you have a tough day? And I was like, no, just in general. I was, like, fucking voice down. I was like, I was like, do you just remember? And I was like, no, just that general feeling of every day that like life is fucked, society's crumbling and like I hate myself and that nothing good's going to happen and terror waits behind every door. And he was like, that sounds like general anxiety disorder. And I was like, no, you're retarded. In hindsight, I'm like, yeah, that to me, that is like the biggest threat. It's not that I get drunk and I'm like, I feel so good. Let's go fuck hoes. Let's go burn it down. Like Saturdays for the boys. It's mm -hmm. not that. The true insidiousness of alcohol for me is I get a glimpse of everything being okay. And I sort of live in that realm where like nothing's ever okay. And I've just kind of learned to live there. I'm 30. I've been doing it for like 20 years now. To me, that's the danger of alcohol. It's like I get a glimpse of like the Garden of Eden. That's, yeah, that's a danger of all like yeah. Any any anything that's like an opiate or like any kind yeah. of yeah. It's yeah because you don't and it, I think it's common in our generation because of the shit we're like living through right now and now because of how little power we have over it. It's just kind of happening. It just it just this feels like this ball that's rolling over us and that we're like. What the fuck? You know what I mean? Like, I get it. I totally get the like. We, like we I mean, have, yeah, a car like, going downhill, and I'm not driving. Correct, and that's why I think sometimes we see a lot of like extreme uh, reactions to the things that happen, is because people are really scared and they don't know what else to do. And yeah, the natural human response to like if being you're, cornered, if a herd is being hunted or you feel like danger is like scream. You scream at the top of your lungs. You scream yeah. fire. You scream you feel but like, you're like being cornered. It's like, but turn right. and fight. Exactly. And so like sometimes our base human reactions take over um, for threats that aren't necessarily like next to right. us. Like it's me. like a fight or flight. You yeah. know what I mean? But it's, but it's literally happening in like, we're using software from like millions of years ago, you know, when it's like, For our forest is under attack. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. But like the forest has gotten so big that you couldn't even go to the other side of the forest in a day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's so all encompassing. And yeah. like everyone's like, the forest is burning down. But you're like, my forest looks okay. But like everyone says the forest is burning down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, and then this yeah. side is also saying the forest is burning down for a different reason. But like, <laughs> yes. Do you know or what you're I mean? like? Or you're like, yeah. they're engineering the burning down. And I don't want exactly. a part of it. Exactly. It's, like it's our, literally two our, people on either side of the fire blaming others the other side for the fire. The smoke but like, that's when, coming in their face. Exactly. But the point is that actually none of us paid attention and we just let this fire happen. Like, yeah. let's be real. And the reality <laughs> like, is, is you're going to die before the fire kills you. Exactly. This exactly. bonfire lasts for thousands of years. You're going to die from old age right, right, before right. this fire kills you. Right. That's And that that's like what I'm grappling with now is like, I wonder how much of my anxiety is just being like too overly plugged into like 
it's a COVID, it's a Trump v. Biden, it's a it's a steal the election, it's a, I gotta go fucking make a difference versus it's like control your reality, control those around you, hold the door, diet, take pride in you know, dress well, take a shower, shave, brush your teeth, you know, set small goals. But man, don't try to don't try to like save don't you can't you're not going to save the whole forest it's like because you're right we're using software from it's you your four cavemen a couple girls a couple babies and you guys got a fire in the cave and like three spears and you protect humans, that spear yeah like humans beyond a group of 50 don't work well together no you can't go beyond 50 people like this is it's been shown in a lot of different like there's a reason like army platoons are separated and yeah often the guys don't even know each other in their own platoons right it's not because like they don't need to know each other they mm -hmm. just need to know that like your platoon like your dudes are your dudes and these dudes are our dudes but we're still on the same side like that's that's we, human beings have worked like that for forever that's how vassal states were yeah. created you know like in vassal regions that's what they were they were like you're on our team but you're not like our group Mm -hmm. that's how you can think of like regiments in the military mm -hmm. like, yes they're all on the same team but like even like your special forces and canadian special forces are on the same team yeah but they work for different countries yeah. <laughs> do you know what i mean it's like yeah, yeah. nato so, warsaw pact like. absolutely like if our special forces comes upon your special forces under shit they're gonna save you and vice versa but like they they don't they have their own like areas of you know effect yeah if that makes sense to you, you yeah know what i mean no absolutely and it's that's what for me i always have to find this like middle ground between part of me is like because for years like i purposely just like never even like not just didn't pay attention to politics or news but actively would like nope not watching that because i was just like i'm trying to get into med school this is what i'm doing yeah, that makes sense. and after a while i, I kind of did feel guilt because i was like you i do have to pay attention like because things happen and we look at it in hindsight and we're like oh the rise of hitler or like whatever the creation of the 13 colonies and it's like it's easy to look at it centuries later and be like oh this movement of people but like i do have to like be active like you at the very least just be aware of what's going on because otherwise like you're going to be led like you know like cattle to slaughter but i found probably being more involved than I ever have been like the last four years being more involved than I have been in my whole life. I found that there are diminishing returns. There's a point where it's like, Hey man, like that's not your identity. You know, like when I laugh at people, cause I don't watch any sports. So when I laugh at people, like, and I'm from new England, which just had like a championship two decades of, of Patriots, yeah. football, Red Sox, yeah. baseball, Bruins, hockey, Celtics, basketball, like they've just had something that will never happen again even that like i'd watch and i'd cheer but i purposely never like get too into it because i'd be watching like a football game with family members and they'd be like oh it's so pissed off and i'll be like why are you letting like that's not physically near you it's happening in foxborough these are people that you don't know tom brady and fucking teddy brewski or whoever yeah. these are guys that make more money in a year than you or your kids will make combined in a lifetime yeah. they don't care about you this isn't actually real and it's why are you letting these avatars through space and time can give you very real feelings. Sure. You can get euphoric, but you can also be, I can't fucking believe they lost. I, you know, I had friends in college. I'm not going out tonight. I'm not going to the bars. I'm so mad at the Falcons. I'd be like, dude, there are a lot of hot girls. And there's like, there are 25 cent drinks. Like we're 20. Let's go. Let's go seize this. And they'd be like, no, I can't. I can't even see straight. And I'd be like, why are you letting that ruin your life? But then here I am looking at something where I'm like, you know, admittedly, I'm like, oh, Dude, fuck, Biden yeah. won, and it's pissing me off. And I'm like, yo, hit the brakes. I have a podcast where I can text one of my older brother's best friends, a, in a way, a link to like a link to my deceased brother, and I can yeah. talk to him and enjoy this. We can yeah. laugh and tell ridiculous stories, and yeah. then I can close this. I can upload it. I'm going to go have a Hot Pocket, a Philly Cheese Hot Pocket. Thank you very much. Great. I'm going to fuck around on some Far Cry 5, maybe FaceTime a friend later life is good life is yeah, good and the reality not, like that's what i mean it's, it's not the thing that was just set up like this whole like I, like i'm aware of the narrative that has been 
Stop being it. pushed in the last yeah. like six months specifically. And let me guarantee you right now, the last six months was not like some epic battle between communism and it capitalism. Was, okay. Yeah, was, your your Democrats to the rest of us English speaking Western countries, wow. your Democrats are our Republicans. Do you yeah. understand that? Like yeah. they are not anti-capitalist. They are they are so they won't even let you have health care. Like <laughs> that's think about that. Those are your leftists. Yeah. Fuck off, man. You don't yeah. have leftists in your country. You don't. Yeah. You have like maybe a handful of five who have senators Bernie. who Bernie. have very little power other than like starting shit on Twitter. Token and speakers. like that's it. They don't have real institutional power. Most of them are newer, like on both sides. I'm talking about like Yang. Like all of these people are newer politicians. They don't have that like institutional power. Yeah. All they can do is like swipe on Twitter. That's their yeah. power right now. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And and most of them had to like primary people in their own party who were just like Democrats who were so far right that they were like, I can't deal with this old fuck anymore. Like that's yeah. usually where it is. So this idea that like, like our right, like Ontario right now is under a very, in our opinion, a very far right, like P, uh, prime minister or not prime minister, minister of our, like our, that would be the good g- governor, I guess. Right. Like very like, like their family has long held business in this country. Like the fan, do you remember Rob Ford, that crack smoking that mayor? Fucking psychopath. Yeah. Yeah. His brother is now our, <laughs> the running our <laughs> province. Really? Yes. Jesus Christ. This is what I mean. Like, so, and even he's like, all right, we need COVID closed down. Everybody wear a mask. Like, let's fucking get, make sure people get money. Like, I'm still unemployed, but I'm still getting 600, 1600 bucks a month. Like, you know what I mean? Because they're not going to let us go homeless. Because right. even even the right wing realizes if there's nobody to buy our shit, we can't no, sell our shit. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You like, can't they have get your country it. club if no one's buying your corporation. Exactly. Yeah. And if the people can't afford to work there because they like literally can't afford to live in the city anymore, yeah, who the fuck are you gonna hire? Yeah, right. You know and what then, I mean? Like, the engineer I, isn't gonna go work at your country club when he loses his job when so, he has nothing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it and doesn't I, work that way. And I see my own cognitive dissonance yeah. where like everyone gets 600 bucks and that was like a two trillion dollar package and i was like yeah well you know people need some money and then like as soon as like biden gets like the certified election on january 6th he's like i'm unveiling like a 1.8 trillion dollar thing where everyone's gonna get like whatever the number is 1100 bucks and i vividly remember looking at my phone and part of me was like we're just spending all this money we don't and another part of me was like you were fine with that eight months ago like to myself like part of me was like "Uh uh-uh shithead you were fine with that just the other month but from an economic standpoint it actually makes more sense to just keep fun i know it sounds stupid like it sounds like you're just giving everybody money but no if people fundamentally can't keep working for whatever reason right industries are shut down like there's still economic collapse after that are still coming after this but like if people can't do that but we still need to keep industry running. We still need to keep these things going. Then the logical solution, it's like keeping a fountain running. That's like gone off the thing. Okay. Let's fucking dump a bunch of water into it. Keep the motor running so that it's oiled. Do you know what I mean? Or like if you're trying to like resuscitate or like test an engine that has been off or like been had some done work done on it, you don't run it through the oil system on the car. You fucking take it off. You run it like, like doing a blood Diagnostic. transfusion, yeah. man. But like sometimes you fucking shit you have has to, to go. Like because the alternative emergencies is... happen, man. Like yeah. th- to think that this stuff doesn't happen. Well, and it's like, and you know what the ironic thing about like this is so fucking morbid. The Republican Party, by not addressing COVID properly, lost so many of its voters. Yeah. Let them die. Let them like, die. And then wonder, why are we losing by a couple hundred thousand? Because they're actually Because they're dead. Like, they didn't get a chance to vote. Yeah. They're dead. And they're yeah. not dead because COVID is such, like, and that's another thing, the misunderstanding of, like, how this virus works. Yeah. Okay. Chances are you and me, we get it. We're fine. We might have yeah. some, like, depending on our genetics, there might be some, like, outlying get shit. a little sick, yeah. You know what I mean? There has been some cases of people, like, having... Some people have lungs basically of a smoker for the rest mm-hmm. of their lives. Some mm-hmm. people can't smell or taste. Like it affects di- people differently, mm-hmm. but by and large, people are not dying because like, it's not like it's treatable. Yeah. We know what it takes, but it's like, 
there's too many fucking people in the in the in the hospitals like that's yeah. that's that's been yeah yeah that's the it, it's not that it's impossible it's just that it's it's not, overwhelmed right it's, it's not like, hard it's to like, hold a penny but it's hard to hold a hundred thousand like, pennies it's like everybody needs mcdonald's at the same time but five of the 10 McDonald's have shut down or like are not working. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And so everybody has been forced into five McDonald's. Yeah. So guess what? Not everybody's getting fed. So yeah. you have to die. And the terrible thing is it's like people, I remember people talking about like Obamacare death councils. Mm-hmm. This is it. This man. is it. This is your death council. This is your, this you is... get to live. You don't get to live. Yeah. And it's, and it, it was totally preventable. Yeah. I mean, like I'm, I, I like business. I like, the ability of people who are good at, you know, who are, who make good shit to be able to make money off of it. I have nothing against people being rich, any yeah. shit like that. Sure. But the way you guys deal with your fucking healthcare, it's like, we realized a long time ago, buy wholesale, buy in bulk, buy it. Like you're going to Costco. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Don't buy it. Like you're going to some fucking fancy Brazilian restaurant where you have to individually order everything on the menu and you're taxed on every single fucking thing they have to go kill the lamb out back and cut it right like when you think about it the the reason everybody thinks american healthcare is amazing is because people from other countries go for specialized care very specific specialized care just means okay that's like having a town with only sushi restaurants like Mm -hmm. who the fuck cares that's great that you can do this one thing all over the world but you have a city of two million people who can't get basic fucking care yeah who can't get what's the point yeah what's the point you know like what the fuck is the point yeah you have this ball and sushi restaurant but you know no one can go get a no one can get a gallon of milk and some ground beef right whereas now you can actually have a situation where you could have that sushi restaurant you can have those things but like the sushi restaurants are better off because and you know this because you were in you were on this pathway you know goddamn well that everybody who goes to be a doctor does not want to be a doctor because it's an amazing thing to do to help people they mm. do it because they know it's a fucking payday a lot of people yeah right? yeah and i know I, I was admittedly half and half i loved the idea of helping people i love thank god you were at least half and a half a lot of people and i know this it goes everywhere but like and i have no problem with doctors being rich that's yeah. sw- like yes if yeah. you go to fucking school for six years and have to do the shit that they have to do absolutely yeah. you get paid better but it shouldn't be because like there's like big corporations that sell drugs like kind of controlling yeah. shit you know what i mean lining it's, your pockets because you prescribe exactly. the new whatever pfizer yes. lacto smith klein right the, like, yeah the basic thing i don't know it, it's just like weird to me like you guys need if you're going to you want to talk about national security okay health is a national security if you yeah. have large popular portions of your population get sick all at once you are susceptible to certain things from yeah. other like I, I don't understand how everything is like, oh communism, they're coming to get us, da, 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 da. but like we don't close the gate. Like, what the fuck, man? Like you yeah. can't you we're talking about like getting like again, yeah, you need national defense, you need guns and shit, but guns aren't gonna stop a virus. Yeah. Guns aren't gonna stop your fucking infrastructure from getting shut down. They're not gonna stop unemployment, they're exactly. not gonna stop rising They can only action. they're a tool for a purpose. Absolutely they are, and they sure. do that purpose well. But you don't fucking build a house with a hoe. You know what I mean? Like you yeah. use the right tool for the right job. And yeah. in this case, I think you guys need to go. And I think you, I don't think there should be a federal. I think it should be, it should be still state, but it should be like the way they implemented the drinking age. Yeah. Like, fine. You guys don't want to take care of your fucking people. We won't take care of you. Like yeah. that's how it should be. It should be yeah. held at hostage. Fine. You don't want to like give your people a decent health care and, and still have the option. If you're rich, you can go to these fancy places if you want. Absolutely. But everybody doesn't go bankrupt because they broke their fucking leg. Yeah. And they just happened to not be employed at the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's like, I remember when my sister's husband lost her job and they were paying like two grand a month to a company called Cobra, like a company literally named after the bad guy in GI Joe. <laughs> And these are your friends like holy fuck dude <laughs> think about it like just like yeah. step away from the whole like you know cool. whatever cool. like right yeah. or wrong you got people paying two grand just to keep to like cobra to cobra and 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 it was because my nieces my three nieces all had pre-existing conditions they were all born with childhood arthritis not something they could help right but because of that they're 
now their parents now owe this company, you know, X amount of dollars just because yeah. they had that problem. Yeah. So it was super night and day when my sister got divorced, like she got a divorce. She, if she had stayed in Georgia, she would, I don't know, she might be homeless now. Now with COVID and everything that happened, she might not because she didn't have an education. She was just a stay-at-home mom, right? She was a good one, but she couldn't make so much money by herself. Yeah. But she was able to come up here and Sick Kids Hospital is the number one children's hospital in the world. It's located here in Toronto. And they, they opened a case on those three. Like an international study on my nieces has been opened because their childhood arthritis that wasn't covered by anybody in Georgia was so unique that they thought, okay, shit, these girls need to be researched. Like this yeah. is something that could save a lot of kids. Yeah. So it's just like, even because the medicine was set up differently, you miss this super huge opportunity to study this rare thing that might save other people. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so it, you can say, yeah, it's great to make money, but look at all this fucking real opportunity you're losing. Look at all this IP. Look yeah. at all this shit. That's just going out down the fucking tubes because you're like, Oh, it's not covered. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. I thought I just saw a poof of smoke. Oh, not on my end. You good. Yeah, it looks like I was just watching it. I was like, I was like, is Rob smoking? And I realized it was right here. And I was like, it'd be a lot more than a poof. It'd be a, You're just like a blackout. <laughs> damn it. Yeah. Um. But yeah, no, it's like, you know, you could almost draw analogies between like the actual creation of the military industrial complex and why that can apply to healthcare. And the reasoning yeah. is, is yeah. that as much as we need to keep the military industrial complex at bay, the reality is, is that what Curtis LeMay said is right when America got into the war, when we first went into Europe, the European theater, uh, at the rate that our planes were being shot down versus the rate at which we are producing new ones, he said that we'll be out of planes in 30 days. Obviously, we ramped up the War Powers Act under FDR, yeah. and LeMay later became the uh, Secretary of Air Force, and then the head of the Strategic Air Command was right there with Kennedy during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Crazy mm -hmm. guy, great guy. The reasoning is, is that for all future things, it was like, just because we're not at war in Korea or Vietnam doesn't mean that we can just shut down all of the um, assembly lines of M1 Abram tanks or H1s or whatever, fighter jets, F-16s, naval destroyers, because when war strikes and war doesn't strike at a time of convenience, when war strikes, it's not just that, right? It's not just back to the fountain analogy. Whoops. It's not just that you can, you know, let the, let the fountain run dry and then pull, we'll put water in it when we need it. It's like, no, you're going to destroy the fountain. And now the, the cost of making a new fountain is going to far outweigh the cost of just putting some bottled water in there. And it's, that's what the entire, like, that's what the entire like argument for like industrial, like industrial comp military industrial complex is, is like, you have to at least keep like a skeleton crew of like trained, like professionals in, you know, who can whatever create new avionics for, you know, F 16s or whatever the mm -hmm. fuck they're on. Mm -hmm. And it's, you have to keep that line so that you can take that engine and you can turn it up to 10 in a time of war, but you never want to turn it off. No, I, and like, and I get that argument. See, we, but that argument needs to apply to healthcare, where we have to have this thing where it's like, we can't just have this thing come in and kill everyone because now it's like, come, like now Tesla's whatever back in like May, they're like, we're using, we're tapping Tesla and GM to build ventilators. And it's like, where we should have had like a system running at the very least at one and been able to turn the dial as opposed to now we have to build a system. It's like, no, exactly. turn it on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So in yeah, there's no reason yeah. that like, yeah, if you can subsidize like other shit, like food and, and the pharmaceuticals, there's no reason you can't subsidize having like literally machine. It's literally just having machines. It's not even, you don't even have to keep these machines running. A lot of them are run like on like motherboards. Right. So it's like electronic. So if you had like an extra 20% of ventilators stored somewhere like say Texas, right? Or some central like location, you know, then we know, okay, well, like 
fucking Montana is like where all of our ventilators yeah. are. In case this shit goes down, yeah. we have a s- clear route from Montana to every other state. Or you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Central location. We have yes. the air. We have the airstrip set up. We yeah. can do a Berlin airlift to every exactly. city. Exactly. There needs and to be like backup for these sh- for shit like this. Yeah. I mean, it's and the it's thing so is, is we do have those backups, but it's only for the shit that kills people. They're like we have all of our nukes. We have all of our like, fighters right away, though. Even that, but even that, like, what's the point? Like, that's great that we have all this like anti nuke stuff, but like nuke is a nuke. Like, it's like once that shit starts popping off, it's over in some regard. It, you know what I mean? In every regard, exactly. It, like, there's this is not the same world we live in as soon as that thing goes yeah. off. Yeah, put a gun to your head if a nuke. Right. Goes off. Because this isn't this isn't oh they bombed Pearl Harbor. No. This is this, this is, is that land irradiated for the end of the world. Yeah, exactly. Like Revelations is here. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. it's so. In conclusion, today's thesis is if you if you support the military industrial complex, that means you also support healthcare. So I guess swallow that red pill. <laughs> yeah. yeah, in a way, I think both should be. I think that's how we like one. It. It's like one. Yeah, one is at eleven and one is at two, and they both need to be brought to five. Yes, a, a steady that, five, a steady that, boil, a or steady, a simmer. Yeah. And one will. can be turned down, and and they both can be turned down, and both can be turned up. Exactly, that's, but not permanently. Like that's not, the thing. That's they can't just be like, oh well, and then eventually turned off quietly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and that's the sound of right. a heart monitor flatlining. Because what's the difference if you can't reach for like a mag of ammo uh, or you can't reach for like a doctor to resuscitate a victim? It's the same shit. You're still it's losing bodies. National, it's both national security. You're losing you're bodies. You're losing man. workers. You're other. losing members of your tax pool. Exactly. That yeah. you use to get money from. Exactly. Yeah. You know, maybe the real lesson I've learned in the last four years is I don't fucking want anything to do with politics. I think politics takes takes these words capitalism socialism communism and they make them so black and white instead of and making nothing. them what they are which is like tools yeah. right they're different ideas of setting up things and neither all three of them have flaws because they're human inventions yeah. so they and there were human inventions that were invented hundreds of years ago right yeah, yeah. <laughs> like so like let's think about this what else really like even your constitution has amendments like fuck, like, yeah. but like, no, these are economic things are untouchable. We must like, keep fuck. these how these are forever. And exactly. it's like again, we're we're using that caveman software yeah. for a space age world. Right. It, right. it it needs to more be like okay, this area of industry is 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 economically capitalist and this area of our industry is economically socialist. The reason is because people need to live with food and water and da 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 da. But people don't need sports cars and jets and like <laughs> like fun things and guns and like these aren't necessarily part of life that like oh man if i don't fire my gun today i'm not gonna live you know what i mean like you have to eat every day you have to drink every day you have to yeah. have a roof over your head or you die you get sick dial and antibiotics exposed. yeah exactly guns are fun guns That's are crazy. awesome and they're cool to protect yourself with absolutely but what's the point of protecting yourself of you've got nothing, nothing to, protect. to protect yeah exactly, exactly. right so right. like like it's gotta be like some order <laughs> yeah. to the importance of things right i'm yeah. not anti any of these things yeah i'm not i love buying shit i like seeing things improve and get cooler and get better uh, i love technology yeah. and the way yeah. it advances but i don't like it when i see like a tech company living like a fucking king with their like little fiefdom of like you know like personal company. security and militias well, and personal armies and like personal fucking like literal like surrounding themselves with like uh dorms like corporate dorms yeah like oh well, yeah you see it's like right? you don't get a house you just live here no no it's like campuses Google. though right it's like campuses. I know. It's google terrifying. campus apple that shit terrifies me they're just these Man, nation no states there. sprouting up basically yeah I and mean, then there's so many PMCs. Like, what, what, what's stop like, these people from just like, wall, like walling off San Francisco and just being like, this is no longer part of America anymore. This Go is fuck yourself. this is Silicon like, Valley. Like, this is like, this is making a country. This is Silica or, instead of Silicon Valley. Like, this is Silica taking over all of California, all the way down to like New Mexico. Like, just taking over that Honestly, area of the state. I don't think that's that far fetched. I know that's the scary <laughs> point. It's like. We've let them just do whatever they want for so fucking long. It's Only like, a matter of time before Goldman Sachs and like Barclays buys off like all of Manhattan Island, sets up again a perimeter, 
get some like naval patrol right. boats. Yeah. I mean, if if I mean they if anyone can afford Blackwater or whatever it is now, XE contracting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll buy off some guys that are making eighty grand a year in the Rangers or Delta Force. Give them five hundred. Yeah. Set up a perimeter. Here's the best weapons money can buy. Yep. You know, maybe that's the natural evolution of things. Maybe it just. And the thing is, that thing to... sucks. That's what sucks, though, because as soon as that shit starts, we're done. Because, like, you can't undo that. If a billionaire can, like, well, it also makes you so susceptible to every other country. Okay. Yes. Google, yes. Google took over California. What's going to stop Putin from being like, hey, Alaska's ours again? Come exactly. Exactly. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. The only reason we don't go to war is because these countries know not to do these things. What happens when something comes along that shows, well, America's actually kind of susceptible to this or like, you know what I mean? That's what scares Mm -hmm. me about Corona. That's what scared me about like all the shit that's been going on. Not that the side, like one side, one and the other side, it's like, you guys aren't the only ones watching there. Everybody's watching you. Everybody's watching. Everybody saw all those people run into the, like everybody. So even, enemies your like everybody yes. saw that yes like well that's, that's the time you good that's the <laughs> like, time you strike. during a civil war that's when you get in exactly. right it's when you see i know, you know right? when the that's... teachers are talking to each other at the front of the room that's when you can sneak out or go get on your phone mm-hmm. if they see the nation collapsing that's when it's like alaska's ours that's when china moves on taiwan right exactly. house divided well you can see them doing it already yeah. well, they're already moving on taiwan already moving yeah it's and then back to what we were saying earlier part of me is like as we talk about this i feel my heart rate getting up and i'm like fuck with america's falling and then part of me is just like you know they're telling me the forest is on fire but i'm looking around and i'm like hey i feel like okay gone i think it's one of those it's one of those in the direction that it is currently headed if if nobody steps up and changes the direction of the country yes it, it, it's a possibility but your country's also been here before and it's had leaders step up and change the direction so it's like it, yeah. it can happen it's That's, just like you're going through some shit and some other growing pains as well like yeah. the information and and like propaganda and who is controlling like who's controlling the information that is getting into your country yes who knows exactly who the exactly. fuck knows like like exactly. what 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 custom tailored uh yeah. facebook feed are you getting you know and if like and if you're some weird nerd like me and you follow a bunch of weird shit then you know they're like scammers and fucking like not hackers but like people who like do fishing and like all of this kind of shit is so has grown so much more because we have all of these countries where people can't really make money but they have the internet hmm. <laughs> and scams and fucking getting people to like click on shit for ad revenue is the easiest way to, to make money right online and it's crazy you just like you can set up like i know there was groups of people who were just like running americans against each other like they would Absolutely. literally be they're like the blue lives Obama matter and, black lives and matter the, the trump and like they're just the same guy running the fucking pages. running both running the both it's they, yeah. they, they would yeah. do blue lives uh, they do blue lives rallies yeah. and the black lives uh rallies and they would just and, it, and yeah. then they the nsa would track the ip address of who made both facebook groups and it's like beijing and it's right. like, because they're just like, hey, the game Watchdogs, that's one thing you can do is when you're so trying to easy. take down a compound, yeah. what you do is you hack into, you hack and you like, you choose, you see a security guard outside, let's say a building, you order a mob hit on that guy. And then at the same time, you call 911 on that guy. So 911 comes to apprehend that guy. And then a mob comes and does a drive by. And now all of a sudden you got this skirmish. And as the skirmish yeah. is happening, you run in the back door and go grab the hard drive out of whatever. And that's, that's, that's a great game. Watch dogs too. But like you can do that. Yeah. Why isn't that happening on a national level? Right. It's because it is like, I guarantee you. I, mean, you, yeah. I played Daisy. I play I play Daisy, which is a video game where there's factions, and we spread disinformation on the Discord all the time, like just to fuck with people. You always do it. You're like, hey, high tower, uh, we're heading to the like trade shop. Uh, gonna go up Kamensk way, and like you just wait to the forest south of Kamensk, and you're like, oh, here comes the ambush, five fuckers, and they like they come up like clockwork, man, because they're Jesus. always like reading, they're always in your DMs and shit, so you can set them up. That's why we have our own private Discord. 
for like our own clan, right? Actual but clan. then we'll we'll leak shit publicly. Public Discord. And Fuck. then just yeah. And then five guys will show up to try to ambush us, and the three of us are behind them. We wait until they set up and we just fucking run up on them and blow them away. Like it's Jesus. If it works in video games, why wouldn't it work? You know, it's else? working like, in real life. Jesus. Christ. Yeah. I mean, the the CIA used to do that with the U two spy plane. What? Yeah, they used they used to take they used to take the U two oh, uh, manual. They would take that manual and they used to take it, leave it out in the sun, leave coffee rings on it, tear a couple mm-hmm. pages, and then they would go disperse these in the Soviet Union. So they would find what looked like weathered and lost U two flight manuals, mm-hmm. and so they're all like, "Hey, we got how this thing works." But the reality is, is these were false manuals. They had all these specifications about things that the U two could actually do much better. So they'd be like, "All right, it says ceiling's forty thousand feet. Reality, the ceiling was seventy. So it's, but it's just." That was back in the that was back in the late fifties and early sixties, mm-hmm. like fucking hey man, fucking a. It's super like, basic like human psychology. If if you're like good at being a tricky little fuck, like you can get far in like life and like games and shit. Like I I've been playing a lot of Daisy lately, so my mind's kind of there. But like even the way we set up like our base, like our home base, there's like there's bait loot all over the place. Yeah, like I got like four crates that just like oh there's two M4s and like a mag in there and like because I want them to stop and be like holy shit they got M4s oh we're gonna grab these yeah. M4s. and they don't go upstairs and grab the LARs and the fucking like dragging off sniper rifles yeah. that you got yeah. right <laughs> so like yeah that's the point leave yeah leave fake yeah yeah and it's... leave like high ish tier loot high-ish. down like AKs yeah. and like M4s and shit like that yeah. stuff that they that aren't super run of the mill but like yeah don't had a good run. Like yeah. two Vega shotguns, like the yeah. auto shotguns. Last run I went yeah. on, it's fucking great. Yeah, you don't don't leave them shit like a Jeep Grand Cherokee. You leave them like a you leave them a new like a Range Rover, but you don't leave them a decked out Land Rover, right? Yeah, Just exactly. enough to pull. We don't. Yeah, the Land Rover that has like a mounted turret on top. That's yeah, don't leave them that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's exactly. upstairs. Yeah. The Jeep is the shitty thing outside. Inside is like a brand new semi tinted window Range Rover. Yeah. One of these yeah. days, one of these days, when when you get to the point where this is just like running, doing its thing, and you can start like playing some games and shit, and I got a like gaming PC, we're gonna play some Daisy, because right? yes. you want to play a game, like <laughs> you want to play like that real that thing that you told me about, where you can just do anything. Yeah. That's the fucking game. We get in there, we meet up, we make a base, and we just go fucking raise hell. Fuck yeah! You can, like grow that? weed and shit in that game. That's insane. Yeah, and like make bricks and like sell them. And like one guy did this video of like I I became the richest guy on the server. And he just like basically maxed out his bank account. And then every time people at the end, he's like, All right, I did what I did. And so people would come in and be like, Yo, what do you need? And they're like, Oh, I don't know. He's like, Yo, here's some night vision goggles and a fucking sniper rifle. (laughs) They're like, What the fuck? Because he had so much money. That's CIA tier shit. You just go yeah. in and you're like, hey, fuck those guys, right? And they're like, yeah, they're like, here's some mini guns and here's some fighter jets. You jet. can do it all the time. You like supply other factions who like. Jesus. So you yeah. can be like a Rothschild, just fund both sides of the war? If you want. Like, fuck. see, the faction I'm with, we're called the Hunter faction. And basically, we're neutral. Uh, we don't have any alliances, but we also don't have any real enemies. Mm-hmm. Basically, if you shoot us, in the open and we all wear like green armbands like you're fucked basically because like you've gone us now you owe us loot essentially and you don't fuck with us because our area is in a castle surrounded by really thick forest and those forests have like 12 wolf spawns and bear spawns so there's like you trying to sneak through the forest is you're gonna get attacked by a pack you're of gonna be killed yeah and we're gonna hear you coming because you're gonna be like fucking firing your shotgun trying to stay alive so like it's crazy man i remember how i remember when john used to i remember he would play red alert mm. i remember one thing he would always do is he'd make great walls of tesla coils so instead of having sure. Tesla coils, which all cover like, you know, whatever, 20 feet with from them, however many yeah, yeah. locks on the grid it would be, John would actually put them next to each other. Yeah. And he would just create these walls of Tesla coils. And I remember it was enough that it wasn't, so it slowly bumped up from the ability to shock people to where there were enough of them that would strike at the same time that he could blow up tanks. Right. And I remember he would just win these games and be playing it on like expert level. And I'll be like, 
I'll be like, but you didn't develop into the newest thing where you can build nukes and shit. And he'd be like, because Tesla coils, they're just cheap enough that there's no reason to go past that. So he would just build like two deep, three deep. And I would just be like, why are you doing that? And he would just be like, because it wins. It doesn't matter. If, it doesn't matter what tanks you give at me. He's yeah, like, he I'm going to hit DPS you with min maxing, like damage per he, second. Min exactly. Max. Like, exactly. Yeah. He was like, yeah. I'm, it doesn't matter what. Doesn't matter how many people you send over here. Yeah. I'm going to hit them with the finger of God. So, and yeah. I used to watch him in awe, and I'd be like, You're a fucking military commander. Or like sometimes, remember he would go try to like take cities. Yeah. And I'd be like, Why aren't you getting like there's like you know mammoth tanks and like you know, different things? But he would just get your basic like run of the mill like level one like rocket soldiers where it'd be like three soldiers each each with rocket launchers and it'd take like whatever 10 seconds to reload and they'd only do so much damage but what he would do is he would just spawn and i shit you not he would just spawn these groups of like three to four hundred and it was yeah. like, why are you doing that? Never. They cover each other's reach. <laughs> they cover time, each other, yeah. and they all fire rockets at the same time. So you'd see like a tank coming, and like the computer would slow down because they'd all yeah, say whatever the same word. You yeah, know, they'd yeah, all yeah. be like target ahead, but you just hear like it'd be like echoing. You'd be like target ahead, yeah, 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 and they'd yeah, yeah. all turn and go, boom, and they'd hit it. And it would just not only that, they'd shoot so many that some would keep going because the tank was already destroyed. So it would just fly into no the guys target, behind them. Yeah. It'd be like, okay, whatever. Sometimes they'd ride a tank right through them and you'd, they'd, you know, it'd just mush a red line where they just squished all the soldiers, <laughs> but it didn't matter because it was like an amoeba. It would just turn around and just cover in the target ahead and they'd all just yeah. boom. And he used to beat these games using like tier, like level one weapons. And I was just like, I just thought he was a genius, but it's kind of that, right? You can just find yeah. these like these weird tactical like, advantages where it's like, like, that's why I really like, I was playing hardcore, like, call of duty for less six months like just non-stop and then i started playing daisy because like call of duty the, the whole point is like who can shoot first mm-hmm. but like daisy it's like okay you have to hit your shots absolutely and like no i'd say it's even more realistic with gun recoil and shit like mm-hmm. that but like it's about stalking people it's about like understanding how people think when they're looting and when they're running away and mm-hmm. like it's not like a gunfight can last 40 minutes sometimes with one yeah. person yeah. because like you're repositioning and you're like yeah. fucking trying to rush in and you're like oh shit he hit me i gotta like go back and rebandage and like eat something to like recover some yeah. like yeah. just chill in a bush for like five minutes yeah just wait yeah. for it to yeah you have to think like that right yeah. and i like shit depending like on how you're playing um if you're using like in-game voice it's hilarious because like other people you can hear them like yelling and shit like you're down they're in the left they're in the bar and like, you're like i'm almost dead <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember uh, Halo Online, um, and it was like it was like Halo One. So this was like two thousand two or two thousand three, like old old. But I remember we had it online, and I remember me and some friends. After and I look back at it, I'm like, that's like it's like deliciously deceptive what we used to do because we realized we had one like my best friend, like the one who I like texted when I lived in the frat house, like that same friend, and. Uh, he was like globally ranked on like Halo, yeah. but it was, but even then it didn't matter because if he had me and like five other shitty friends, that one global ranking didn't do much. Right. And it was because as a team, it didn't matter what your kill to death ratio is. If everyone's dying except one guy, it doesn't matter, yeah, right? It's having Michael silly. Jordan on a team of retards. It, yeah. You can only carry the team so much. So I remember we actually devised this plan where I would go out and I would join other teams but then like he and I would talk on the cell phone. So there'd be like chat on the game, yeah, yeah, but then yeah. there'd be like out of like earshot. That happens on Daisy sometimes. Where we'd play too, on, yeah. I would go into other teams and then right at the right moment, I might play with that team for like four or five rounds. But then when I met up and we were playing my best friend, I'd be like, you know, like we'd have like a go word or whatever it is. You know, like night. I think one of the ones we used was like was like Pearl Harbor. It was like Tiger, Tiger, Tiger. Sure, sure. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And I would wait until all of my guys were getting ready to go siege, and then I would just take the rocket launcher and shoot it right into the ground. I'd kill myself. I'd kill yeah. all of them, right, <laughs> and then he would swoop in, and they'd be like, "What the fuck? It was a team killer." Right. right my name right. was always just Mister Happy, and they'd be like, "Happy's," and I'd be like, "I'm sorry. It, it was an accident. I was trying to." But because I would only do it once every like five rounds. I could write it off as like a, I just clicked like the wrong button. 
because right, it's not right, like right. I did it nonstop. So it'd be like, but it was just this tactical, like knife in the side, right at the right. Yeah, tactical I was like goofball. <laughs> I was like twelve, but I look yeah. back, I'm like, that's evil. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, talking about, yeah. It was just fuck tactical goofball. Yeah, we like it's same like Daisy. Sometimes you you at nighttime, you know, you're cold, so groups will start a fire, but you can see the fires, like even in the forests during the day you can see the smoke and shit so like i've seen people who have like stalked people like groups of two or three guys that are just sitting around the the fire either cooking or just trying to warm up and they'll run up and they'll just drop a grenade and run away and then <laughs> like way too quickly for the guys to realize what's going on they're like hey what <laughs> it's like done yeah. the other times we do things like suicides where like i would like pull a grenade but i wouldn't even throw it yeah i would just stand there with it <laughs> so you wouldn't so again it was it was all about tactical suicides because you could always have right. you could always have plans and shit but no one would ever no one everything was always limited at like this person's gonna go for self-preservation no one yeah, ever yeah, no one ever see. factored in suicide and so but not only that this guy and it's 5 45 i do i gotta wrap this up in like 15 yeah, 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 no, yeah no, no. all right um do you need me to wrap it up there? Dude, yeah, dude. So, uh, Ace, like as soon as we can after this probably yeah. like one okay we'll, I'll, we'll go for like two minutes um and it was yeah, like but i remember i used to and again it was like 12 13 this was like pre like iraq invasion i remember another tactic we had was we started to get crazy because instead of being uh i started i was mr happy that was my name all caps mr happy i started recruiting other people into happy's clan and then we'd also start to call ourselves Happy's children. Yeah. <laughs> and you do what, well in Daisy. What they would do, <laughs> what they would do is I would then tell them, I'd be like, go join these other clans. And I'd be like, wait until mm -hmm. I give you That's like true. and then I would email them on like Netscape or something as opposed to on the channel. Sure. And it yeah. was all about like clearing a path for this one team that had my best friend on it. And I would be like, Okay, I need you to go on a full suicide right now. And right. they didn't care. It was they were like, I'll do it for the motherland. That was like for Happy's right. children. And I just had these teams of people tactically killing themselves so my friend's team would advance. And I remember I started to get really good at it. I started to like manipulate whole like, you know, whole yeah. like groups of games. And it was around that time I remember my mom coming because I'd spent like 12 hours a day for like a month on it. I vaguely remember my mom coming and saying, if you want to like kill, you can go join the army. Otherwise, like go outside. <laughs> And that was the end. That was the end of Happy. I was like, stop role playing a psychopath. <laughs> He's like, stop <laughs> role playing. This, yeah. not, stop trying to be the Bilderberg group and like manipulate yeah. other sides. Just stop Dude, playing. You would, you would so love that was the, Daisy or like Rust was, or like. I was gonna say. So that was the true death knell. It wasn't Happy's children. It was. Yeah. It was mom. an outside. It was an outside wild card. No one. Happy's oh. mom. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I knew. Happy's Bro, mom. I, knew. I would love to find out one day that my mom was gaming. And she was like, I'm going to make a tactical move. <laughs> I found your this mom sale. was actually, yeah, your mom was actually like running this server the other and team, wanted you she was out like, of there because you were causing too much. She like backtracked, she she like, fight, yeah. <laughs> she like yeah. backtracked what she was hearing on the voice chat versus what yeah, she was yeah. hearing from my room. So and she was like, I think I found the cell. Yeah. I found Happy's children. She was like, don't worry, I grounded him. He's outside now. Like the field is clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a dirty, dirty game of warfare. Put the head off a snake. Yep. Never <laughs> saw grounded. it. Never <laughs> saw it coming. Fuck. Uh, it's fucking All right. Well, yeah. this has been a fantastic podcast, Rob. Thank Absolutely. you. I needed this today. Thank you very much, Cheers. my friend. As always, I love you, Rob. You're always welcome on this podcast. And thank you for your stories. And um twenty twenty one is gonna be good. 2021 is going to 2021 is going to be good. Any worse. <laughs> you know why it's going to be good? Because it can't get any worse. Yeah, basically. All right, buddy. All right, buddy. I'll see Take you. Later, buddy. Bye. Peace.